This novel is possible because of a Patreon member request. So if you want to make a request like this you can become Patreon member. The link to my Patreon account is given at my discretion. It helps a lot thanks for watching this video. 101 7000 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Will you keep counting all of them? Yes. Won't you get bored? Nope. If you lost count we are not going back. E? Why? Seriously now? We need to hurry. But if their number is incorrect, it means we got cheated. I don't care. Nefertiti doesn't care. We just need to get going before the guards notice that the man is missing. Don't worry about that. The body got taken by the waterfall and we have a solid alibi. If they found the corpse, they will think that the man was washing in the river and got attacked by a bear. Aha. Uh -huh. That's why you told me to steal some of his clothes and towels. And also told Nefertiti to finish him with her claws. You seem to be learning. But why all the trouble? Well, I don't want to cause trouble for Narfi and Rada. Sometimes I am not sure if you are a good person or a bad person. Huh? Are you insulting me? Of course, I am a psychopathic person with a tendency to be a hypocrite. I bow to your lowliness, oh evil one. Haha, <laughs> praise me more. 130. Oh, look, an etched tablet. What is an etched tablet? Oh, you will love this one. On the path we are walking there are ten etched tablets. Each one of them tells a part of the story of the dragon war that happened in the Marathic era. There is a secret about these etched tablets that few people know. What is it? These tablets were built in the glory of the goddess Kine, goddess of the storm, widow of shore, and mother of all men. She is also the one who taught men how to use the Thursday arm to fight off the dragons. Kine later became the goddess we know today as Kynareth goddess of the sky, but this place we are walking in can be considered her holy ground. Therefore, if you read the tablets, you will get a blessing from Kine called Voice of the Sky. It allows your Thursday arm to be stronger, the weather to be less harsh on you, and the wild beasts will not harm as long as it doesn't get harmed. This is one of the trails my teacher gave me, to read all the tablets. Yes. Who is that teacher of yours by the way? An old hunter who used to be a friend to Nurana but he now lives alone in the woods. After I manage to finish this trail, I will return to him one day to take the true trail of Kine. Good luck. What does this table say by the way? I can't read it. Oh, wait a bit. My ancient Nordic is a bit rusty. It says, Emblemite, before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all Mundus, their word was the voice, and they spoke only for true needs, for the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. That. MHM? Interesting let's keep going. Zvul.c Omicron M. We went going the road we are taking and I kept counting. 403. Another tablet. Emblem 2. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus, the dragons presided over the crawling masses, men were weak then, and had no voice. Sounds sad. Yeah, lucky me, didn't get to reincarnate there. Fine, let's keep moving. We kept moving while reading the tablets? The more we go forward, the colder it got. Of course, we are climbing a mountain so it will get so damn cold at some point. Another one. Emblem 3, the fledgling spirits of men were strong in old times, unafraid to war with dragons and their voices, but the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. Told you dragons are scary. Nefertiti shall protect me and fluff them down. Yes, human. Meow is strong. Emblem 4, Kine called on Parthurnax, who pitted man, together they taught men to use the voice, then dragon war raged, dragon against tongue. Kine be praised. You sound like a religious idiot. I just like Kine. Emblem V, man prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world, proving for all that their voice too was strong, although their sacrifices were manyfold. Hooray! Let's camp here for the night. Nefertiti, leave that nerd alone, come and gather berries with me. Stupid human is right. I think you should take a look at Snovel.C Omicron M. Emblem 6, with roaring tongues, the sky children conquer, founding the first empire with sword and voice, whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Told you dragons ain't that scary. Say that to one of them in the face. Emblem 7, the tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled, Jurgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation, to understand how strong voices could fail. This is a sad story. You know it, Jal. No. Okay, history lesson. Jurgen Windcaller was a Nord chieftain and hero from the first era who was believed to be the mightiest of all the tongues, voice masters. He was the founder of the Greybeards. During the War of Succession, in the middle of the Battle of Red Mountain, Jurgen Windcaller helped his fellow Nords in a war against the Dumer and the Chimer. During the battle, the Dumer and the Chimer completely annihilated the Nordic armies, forcing them out of Morrowind and back to Skyrim. After the aforementioned disastrous battle, where his army was annihilated, he spent seven years pondering the meaning of his defeat. He finally came to the conclusion that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the Thursday Om. Following this revelation, Jurgen developed a pacifist creed called the Way of the Voice that preached the Thursday Om should only be used for the worship and glory of the gods rather than martial exploits. After he converted to pacifism he became known as Jurgen the Calm. What happened next? Let's just kill that damn troll first. Emblem 8, Jurgen Windcaller chose silence and returned, the 17 disputants could not shout him down, Jurgen the Calm built his home on the throat of the world. Continuing the history lesson, Jurgen's philosophy prevailed, largely due to his unshakable mastery of the voice. 
His victory was sealed in a legendary confrontation, where the calm is said to have swallowed the shouts of 17 tongues of the militant school for three days until his opponents all lay exhausted. These tongues later became his disciples. It was after this confrontation he founded the Greybeards, a monastic order dedicated to mastering the way of the voice. He also built High Hrothgar Temple, located near the peak of Throat of the World, which served as the monastery where the Greybeards meditated and perfected their voice. Sounds like a man of quality? Unlike someone. Everyone is a scoundrel at some point. Emblem 9, for years all silent, the Greybeards spoke one name, Tiber Septim, Stripling then, was summoned to Hrothgar, they blessed and named him Dovakian. Tiber Septim, when he was known as Hshalti Earlybeard, was summoned to the throat of the world by the Greybeards after his victory over the Reachmen at Old Hraldan. By that time he was still called General Talos of Atmora. Look at the passion in your eyes. You said you hated history. This is not just history. This is a dream. I know a few million people who would load their game with more than 500 mods to get to do what I do. I don't understand what you meant but, this place is beautiful. Yeah, the world is so damn tiny from here. How much left? Not much. Emblem X, the voice is worship, follow the inner path, speak only in true need. How much did you count? 7,000 steps. So it's true. Don't mind that now. Look at that. How did they build that up here? Ask Todd Howard. Who is he? God. I guess. So what now? I don't think the Greybeards have noticed us yet. I would be scared if they did. Don't get cocky. These people are not some elderly monks living up on a mountain for nothing. What do you mean? These guys are pacifists and all but they are monsters beyond my understanding. Come on. To tell you the truth, I don't dare to even compare Nirana to them. Are you serious? Just don't do anything funny for the time being. How are we going to sneak past them? You said they won't allow us to pass. Yeah, they are overprotective when it gets to that thing in particular. But there is a weak point all the overwhelmingly strong people have. They always overlook the weak. Yes, the mammoth would never mind the ant. That's why I developed this Thursday um. Are you finally using it? Yes, I will. Hee <laughs> hee. It has been a month since I used this damn shout. I hate it so much. Here, let's tie ourselves together. We can't lose each other after that Thursday um. This Thursday um I developed is a bit annoying. It is dangerous and very flawed but effective so tying ourselves together is the best way to avoid its after effect. This Thursday um is not a shout like most shouts, it's a whisper like aura whisper Thursday um. I called it the disregard whisper. Its words meant disregard, ignore, forget. A Thursday um that would make its user disregarded, ignored, and forgotten during the effect time of the shout. The words are, Vond Niber does rock. 102 Parthurnax. A slash N, and for chapter 100 we bring you pay a a a a Arthur a a a a a Greetings, Vunjunyik. I am Parthurnax. Who are you? What brings you to my Strunma, my mountain? Oh, my, Talos? I think I shouldn't have added too many dragon mods. Ha ha, ha ha, John, my eyes are playing one silly trick on me. That makes two of us. This, this is a little bit too big. In front of me was someone I yearned to meet since the very first day I came to this world. Parthurnax, the master of the Greybeards. But the Parthurnax in front of me is a little bit too large. Nope, maybe this is just too freaking large. What the hell? Few hours earlier. Hi Hrothgar or Hrothgar is an ancient monastery located in the peaks of the throat of the world, the tallest mountain in all of Tamriel. Hi Hrothgar is the home of the Greybeards, a group of powerful monks that dedicate their lives to studying the way of the voice. The monastery itself was built to block the road beyond it. That road is what leads to the peak of the throat of the world. There lies the place I want to collect the unmelting snow from as well as Parthurnax, master of the Greybeards and the ancient dragon that lived through the ages on the mountain waiting for the return of the world eater. Now, to pass the monastery, I need to go unnoticed by the Greybeards who won't let anyone pass the place. That's why I needed some sort of method. The best way I could think of was to make myself disregardable to pass through the place. The disregard shout was something I developed by creating the aspect of being disregarded. That is why I sat frozen in the woods for a full week to get disregarded by the wild to the highest degree possible. The moment I understood how to be disregarded, I started developing the shout. It took me one month but it was an easy one. I can shout it at myself or at someone, but its effect is very annoying. For example, if I made Joel disregard me, she may not notice me next to her, if she is fighting she may shoot arrows while ignoring me who may be on the way, if we went somewhere together she may forget who did she go with or why she is here. That's why we tied our hands to each other so that we can't forget each other. We also did the same with Nefertiti. After that I shouted, Voned Niber does rock which means, disregard, ignore, forget. As long as I am in a physical contact with Jal and Nefertiti, we can be aware of each other but that was a bit hard. Still, we managed it somehow. Casting magic or throwing an object won't disturb the effect though. Now the problem was how to pass the monastery of High Hrothgar. Should we go through or go around? Going through is dangerous. Going around is dangerous too. Going through means having a great possibility to confront the Greybeard which is something I don't want to do at all. Going around means passing through the monastery like thieves which also may offend the Greybeards. After thinking, rethinking and overthinking, I decided to summon it over. The awesome flame Atronach Hawk. We are riding it over the monastery. Are you sure we will be safe? No, but I can think of a way to get the attention of whoever finds us away. 
I started doing some preparations around the entrance of High Hrothgar. A small prank to be frank. Zvul.c Omicron M. After that, I jumped on the flame at Ronak Hawk and Jull who was carrying Nefertiti clung onto me. After it rose over 15 meters, it could barely fly over the roof of the monastery. The other side of the monastery is within reach but I could see a tower on the other side. The other side has a courtyard and a tower indeed but the monks shouldn't be going out that much, yet it seems someone is the there. I don't recognize that someone but he wasn't that old as I remember the Greybreds should be. He was in a black robe and apparently had shaved his head. He was sitting atop the tower. By checking him more clearly, I noticed that he was a bit too young. Who is that? It doesn't matter as long as the plan works. After we passed the monastery and flew over the courtyard, I cast Featherfall and jumped down from the flame at Ronak Hawk with Jull and Nefertiti. The hawk kept flying until it got the attention of the person on the tower. As he saw it, he appeared to have panicked and went down from the tower to check the weird flaming bird that was flying over the monastery. He judged that it was troublesome and evoked a frost magic spell then started attacking the flame at Ronak Hawk. I was commanding the hawk to evade left and right to test this unknown person's ability. Once he got sick of the movement he inhaled and fixed his sight on the hawk. F-O-K-R-A-H. Whoa, did he just use the Thursday Om? Look at that. Frost breath shout. That person just shouted two words of frost breath shout. A frost force wave emerged from that person's voice and struck the flame at Ronak Hawk. The hawk took damaged and disappeared due to it. Amazing, system, record that in a video file. Confirmed, I think you should take a look at snovel.c Omicron M. Good, now let's see. Something made of wood fell from the sky after the hawk was destroyed. As that man saw it, he hurried towards it and picked it up. Once he saw it he froze for a second, then started running to the monastery. He clearly got panicked. I saw you writing something on that wooden plate. What was it? Jull asked. It said Grindzy asked Havat, dot. And it means, meet me at the entrance. Why would he do what you tell him? Let's just say humans are a bit easy to manipulate. I walked through the now empty courtyard and headed to the way beside the tower. There, we saw a gate and what was beyond it was a wall of storm. No one can pass anything like that. There is only one way to pass it but I was waiting for something. I was focusing my ears on something far away and after a few minutes, I could finally hear it. Bang! This meant that the people inside the monastery finally went to the entrance. I left some rune traps on the floor ahead of the entrance of the monastery. They were nothing serious, just a flashbang rune. Now let's get this over with. Lock Vakor. I used a Thursday um I barely mastered. The first and the second words went well but the third didn't come out. Hurry, let's run. As I shouted, the storm wall disappeared and the path beyond it was clear. Lock Vakor is the clear skies shout that can clear the wind and make the weather into its best condition. It is also a very important shout in the game. As the road beyond the storm wall was cleared, I ran holding Joel's hand. We were running as if a mammoth was behind us. I actually was afraid from the greybeards so I prepared a puny trick to make them look away for a while. After that we kept moving forward in a very harsh road, every two or three minutes I had to use clear skies shout to keep advancing. And finally, we reached the place we needed. The peak of the throat of the world. The top of the snow tower. The highest spot of earth known to in the whole continent of Tamriel. And I think I can feel him gazing at us. Here he is. I can see him. He spread his wings with vigor and soared in the sky, then and with some graceful movement that didn't suit that size of his, he landed in front of us. John, something is coming. Be careful. Boom shake. Dramiel lock. Greetings, Vunjunyik. I am Parthornax. Who are you? What brings you to my Strunma, my mountain? Oh my Talos? I think I shouldn't have added too many dragon mods. What appeared to me in front of me was a dragon. But even with immortality the dragons shout have, this dragon showed clear signs of great age, including tattered skin on his wings and tail, broken and chipped horns and chin spikes, dulled color in his skin and eyes, and several teeth missing. Ha ha, ha ha, John, my eyes are playing one silly trick on me. That makes two of us? Excuse me for a second. I said as I regained some composure. I moved to the side and looked at Parthornax from the side. Yep, I am sure of it now. This is not the normal size of the dragon I thought it should be. This is too freaking large. The dragons from the game were almost around 20 meters long and 4 meters high but this was double of that? Damn it, Bethesda, you even cheated us with the size of the freaking dragons. John, John, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, excuse my rudeness, my name is John Dare. Officially, Joan Hilt Firemane. It is an honor to meet the Grand Master of the Greybeards. Master? They see me as Master. Wooth. Onik. Old and wise. It is true I am old though. Part of the wisdom can only be obtained with age. I replied. But that's not what I am really here to talk about. You already know who am I, right? The dragon was a bit taken aback then said, Yes, Vafza, you speak true. Forgive me. It has been long since I held Tinvake, conversation, with a stranger. I gave in to the temptation to prolong our speech. I don't mind at all. We still have some time before the world start lashing at us. I said while laughing. Zuran, strange. You seem to already know much about your des, your fate. You will be surprised by how much I know, but that's not our concern anyway. We still have a short time to enjoy this peace. Vafzin, true, tell me. Why do you come here, Volon? Why do you intrude on my meditation? Don't call me Volon like it is a bad thing. 
He will be seeing me a lot from now on. Also, I came here to take some of the unmelting snow to fix that thing and will be leaving as well. I hope you don't mind. 103 A Joel in distress. A town in need. Joel's POV. John? Hey John? Why is not he replying? He told me he would bring me to see the master of the Greybeards. He never said anything about a dragon. A real dragon? A living real dragon? A dragon? Real? I mean. John always told me there will be dragons and they will appear in the world. I believe what John says even if it was lies. I know that he is the only family I have and I have to put my faith in him. Did I not believe him? I mean, I know I believe him, but with a dragon? I feel like my faith is being tested. He knows many things. He is always amazing and shining. He even knows where to find a dragon. That is just too much. He is not even nervous. He is so natural in front of the dragon and is talking to him. He was not even afraid at all and checked the dragon's body. What is going on? When I look at the dragon, I feel. I feel so, so insignificant. The aura, the magic, the power. I feel like I can't even be worth considering in front of such a being. Even Nefertiti is frozen. No one is moving in front of that majestic being. Yet, John. Is he laughing with the dragon? I can see that face that he has. He seemed that he was longing for this meeting. His happiness is barely contained within him. Can John be this comfortable towards dragons? Are dragons that easy going? I read in John's books that dragons are beings created for domination. How can John be standing face to face in front of one with this happiness on his face? He doesn't seem to be pressured by the dragons at all. I, on the other hand, didn't even move. Not even once. I was frozen in place from the very beginning. I look at John and all I can see is his big and broad back. He was standing there, tall and strong. Nothing I would be able to catch up to. I looked at myself and felt weak. Can I even stand behind him? Can I support him and be his strength? Can I be of any use? Why is he so close to me yet so far, far away? I thought I grew stronger. I thought I became equal to him. I thought he can be mine no one else gets to share him with me. I was an idiot. This world can't even stop him when he wants something. Can I endure his fate? Can I follow him on his path? Can my insignificance be of even useful to move a straw away from hindering him? What am I thinking? Zvul.Ciomicron M. Should I just turn and leave? He won't stop me if I wanted to quit here. I feel it. I can't move forward from this point. I can't even muster my voice to call for him. But, but when I tried to step back just now, my body obeyed me. I get it. I get it now. Beyond this point is a step that only gods can walk. No way. Is this how my life is supposed to be? Is it like this? For all those who I love dearly to move forward and I get stuck? Mother, what should I do? He is too hard to reach. This is beyond me. I turned around and took a step away. First step. My eyes are wet even in the coldest place in the world. Second step. I can already feel that my tears are everywhere on my face. Third step. It became easier to cry, easier to walk away. I give you. Wait, you idiot. Huh? Someone called? Who is that? Where am I? Don't go. Who is it? Why is it so dark in here? I was standing there just now, with John and the dragon. I don't know this place. Why is it dark? Where am I? My mind spoke itself. You don't know. A voice replied. You don't know, yet you are the one who made this place. You? Who? It can't be. So you realize what have you done? No? Impossible. You just let your friends down, and drive away the people who care for you. You shouldn't be here. Yes, we shouldn't. Yet, here we are. Tell me, was it fun? Killing me. Was it fun leaving me to die? Was it fun letting everyone down? And now you are leaving him? You just don't change, don't you? No, mother you don't understand, I was. We understand? We understand very well. You just make friends when it suits you then move on when it is hard. When they need you. Go away. I didn't want you to die, Stabrius. Then why do you follow the one who killed me? Stop. I don't want to talk with anyone. Huff. Huff. I shouted and they all went away. Mother, I am sorry. Stabri you asked too? I know we went after John together but your death was not something I would forgive. John only protected himself from us. I feel guilty to run away. I can't forgive myself, friend. I feel so guilty. Sob sob. Who is that? Someone is crying. I looked around. The place was still black but I could feel someone around. I walked to the voice. Hey, kiddo, do you know where is this? I think you should take a look at snovel.ciomicron m. I found a small girl crying while sitting on the ground. You want to go, like everyone else, but sob but I won't go. You weak, sob coward. The girl was crying and felt a bit broken. It made me feel overwhelmingly sad. Ah, uh, I remembered. You, you were the one who called for me. You said wait, you idiot, dot. The girl's weeping stopped and looked at me. I saw her face and my body all tensed up. She, she is. The bloody scar on her left eye, the light gray skin, the black hair, the tattered dress. She is. Me? Yes? You are an idiot. I. You left everyone? You are a coward. An idiot? Unfaithful? Untrustworthy? Bulletin. What about all we have been through? All the suffering? All the songs? All the pain? All the fight? To what end? So you can bury your head in the dirt and turn away? You forgot what it all means. I am no. It all led us there? On that mountain? And you became like a rat? He took us and cared for us yet that's how you treat him? This is our place. Wake up. No, 
What I didn't want to go, I was afraid. You know you can't measure up to him, you know there is no way you can become his and he becomes yours alone, so you just became afraid. Like the coward you are. No. Yes, I am afraid. Because you are an idiot. No, I am not an idiot, I love him. Like nothing I ever loved before, I love him, I worship him, he is my everything. I can't stand beside him and I can't be his strength if I an idiot. I was never an idiot and I will never be. You are not powerful enough, you can't. And what's with that, huh? What's with it? Tell me, I am afraid, yes. His path is too hard to follow, yes. He is not afraid of going any length ahead, yes. But I am not a coward. You think your false bravery will fool me, I am you. I know who the fuck you are and I said I am so fucking afraid, damn it. But I am not a coward, I am me, I will kill in the name of fun and the one I love, so go away. I will be afraid and move ahead, what's with it? Go away. Why ah, uh, huff, huff, that is right, whatever it is, I am not a coward. Huh, what is going on? Too much light? What is happening there? Why did this young me turn into a light thing? It's too bright, and blue, huh, blue. Oh, rise and shine, sweetheart, it's almost sunset here. Blue sky above, and John, and Nefertiti, and a dragon. By any chance, am I the first person ever to be awoken by a human, a cat, and a dragon, all at the same time? I somewhat got the urge to ask that question. Ah, uh, yes, how envious, you've beaten me to it. John said as if he remembered something. He he, he is still acting dumb around a dragon. I don't think there will be anyone who can do it like though. What is that smell? Something smells charred. Oh, about that. His fault. John pointed towards the dragon. Ah, uh, what happened? Dragon said my you small and me ow old. Dragon said fat and burn mountain, everything smells. For some reason, the idiot cat is saying something so strange. John. Oh, about that. It happened a few minutes ago. John's POV, a few minutes ago. I came here to take some of the unmelting snow to fix that thing and will be leaving as well. I hope you don't mind. I said to Parthurnax. Hmm, Drem. Patience. There are formalities which must be observed, at the first meeting of two of the Dove. Parthurnax said and turned his head away to half-rounded rock. By long tradition, the elder speaks first. Hear my Thursday um, feel it in your bones. Match it, if you are Dovakian. Parthurnax then opened his mouth and shouted one mighty shout. Il, Tur, Shul. A strong stream of fire accompanied these words as Parthurnax said them and a true dragon fire breath fell on the rounded rock. Once he finished his fire breath he looked towards me and said, the word calls you, go for it. I obeyed what he said and approached the wall. There were some draconic runes left by the breath. I just noticed how the word was spoken and performed so I could see it clearly. I understood it once my eyes fell on it. It was Yul and it meant fire. I was still far from comprehending the world though. A gift? Dovakian. Yul. Understand fire as the Dov do. Parthurnax said and a stream of energy came from him towards me. Whoa. This is. I understand the word. I comprehended it. No. Parthurnax gave me a part of his knowledge about fire. It. It is so deep. No words can describe that. Parthurnax seemed a bit amused and called for me. Now, show me what you can do. Greet me not as mortal, but as Dova. Fine. You asked for it. Ahem. Y-O-L. Unlike the fire breath that Parthurnax performed. Mine is, let's just not mention it. It was way too embarrassing. A force of fire just was formed with my word and flew towards, Parthurnax. Ah, uh, yes. Sasaduff low small. Parthurnax spoke very loudly as if life has returned to him. The dragon blood runs strong in you. It is long since I had the pleasure of speech with one of my own kind. I smiled. I am more pleasured to finally meet you, Dava Duanakon. I replied to him the way dragons speak. Of course, I was a bit embarrassed. So, you have made your way here, to me. No easy task for a jor, mortal. Even for one of Dava SOS. Dragon blood. What would you ask of me? I came here seeking the Vosalaz Od, the unmelting snow. I intend to fix this white file. Nii Fron Malmendok. I felt it familiar to the place, as this is the most sacred mountain in Skyrim. Zakrivok Strunma. The great mountain of the world. You can take what you came for, but you can't dally here. By the time you take the way down, your Fadden, your friend will face a grave danger. You need to return to Gevult Avaklam. A friend? In danger? And a he? Gevult Avaklam should mean that castle above water. Winterhold? Wulfer. Bo Dovakian, Nii Los Nii Du Gut Wahai, it is not too late. Kogon, thanks, Parthurnax, eh, Jal. 104 before the storm. Alina's POV, you said in Windhelm. Yes, my lady, he appeared there and the description matches. Svakin said, this is interesting. Darth Vader who disappeared for a while then showed himself four months ago and caused mayhem in Windhelm. What else in the report? The last time he was seen was when he broke through the front gate of Windhelm alone on a flame Atronach horse. I know he can use the spell that is created by John Dare. I still don't get the connection between these two. The Flame Atronach variations are John Dare's speciality, the Storm Atronachs are normally researched by Teacher Lanath and the Frost Atronachs by Master Nurana. Crimson Moon? Can't it be that they are the same person? Yes, it is possible but everyone says that John Dare is here in the Midden. Even Master says so. In the Midden for half a year? I can't believe it. 
Experts in our clan lock themselves in caves for years to gain better understanding to the ways of the blade. The way of magic is more mysterious especially for a mystic like John Dare. Yes, it is still suspicious how someone of his age can stay all that time in an inner door training but nothing is impossible for us mystics. Also, it is said that John Dare has a follower that goes by the name of Jolinar. It seems like Darth Vader and his follower to me. We will know the truth sooner or later, Skywalker. Darth Vader and his Thunder Fist are an opponent I can't lose to once again. The same goes for John Dare. I don't want to break Master's heart over her favorite student but my heart can't bring me to lose in talent. Of course, Crimson Moon is the pride of our clan's patriarch as well as the rest of the clan. Your progress under Archwizard Nirana the last half year is amazing and your new magic will trash a thousand John Dare and a thousand Darth Vader combined. Fufu, Skywalker, you started to become a flirt. It is all true, my lady, the Lady of the Storm is not your newest title for nothing. The wind magic of yours made even the destruction school students and scholars bow to you. Ah, yes, that happened. The wind magic was a project that Master Nurina and Senior John Dare worked on but they gave up halfway. I don't know why but I got pulled into it and continued from where they stopped. After a few months of research, I reached the point to be able to control a very rare destruction mizgic element. The wind magic? I was into frost magic before but my defeat against Darth Vader in the clan's sacred ground was epic. I could finally come to a conclusion that I needed to be in a place like this where magic is a daily practice. I found a lot of strong talented people in this town. Names like John Dare, Darth Vader, Jolinar, Wolfer. These people are geniuses in magic, sword, and smithying. The last person I met was the town's blacksmith who works for John Dare. His name is Wolfer. This guy can make miracles with steel that gave him the title of Thousand Hammer Blacksmith. His work speed is beyond understanding. When he works in the forge, he needs at least 10 apprentices to keep up with him. I tried to invite him to the clan but he didn't even consider it. Seems like Wolfer and John Dare are sworn brothers. This town is so interesting, I can never get bored here. I even had to disobey a direct order from the college and went to assist the town against pirates. It seems the town has a big animosity with the Blood Horkers and the Blood Sales clan. Still, the college is trying not to take action. If I was not a member from the Silverblade clan and the student of Archwizard Nurana, I would have got scolded like a thousand times by now. Savo's Aaron the Archmage is too lax and doesn't want to interfere. These people don't get politics at all. Lady Alina. Someone interrupted my thoughts. Who is it? I asked. It is a student the Creation Club, my lady, the Rejuard girl. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. Ah, Yaira. Come in. To think it is her. I got closer to these people to get I information on John Dare but I ended up joining them. They still treat me like a lady of a big family though. Lady Alina, I came to tell you. I told you to call me Alina without lady, we are friends. The girl seemed a bit troubled so I gestured for Svakin to get out. No we are alone. Really no need. I just came from the town and it seemed they are preparing for the defense battle. Wolfer and Trudvar seemed a bit troubled over some logistics so I came to report. Oh, thank you. I guess I should head out. Winterhold is a good town now. Many people live here and it started to get on the blood horkers bad side. Now as they started to attack the town, many students and scholars sneak out to assist the defense. I can go openly but seniors like Svadl, Holman, Rusning and these people need to sneak. That's why I gathered them under the creation club with the permission of the team's secretary, Scholar Elial. We go out in missions to, ahem, gather ingredients. All right, Yaira. Let's go. Thank you, Alina. Fufu, you are welcome. Whoa, she called me by my name. Let's keep the fact that I am happy aside. I took the way out from the dorms and headed directly to the entrance. Yaira went to call for the rest. Svakin was sent to get something from the club for me and he will return immediately. Hmm, let's head to town then. The wind is strong today. The pirates will come from the north so the wind will be on their backs. Bad for both me as a wind mage and also for the archers who will have to shoot them from the cliff. I see all the preparation are being done while I was crossing the broken bridge to the town. After I crossed it, I could see the command tent and Wolfer and Trudvar in it, they are the ones who are responsible for the town defense, there is also a woman called Ilishka, the bathhouse manager, WEL met, Lady Alina, thank you for coming, thank you for calling me over, Wolfer, I greeted the town's chief blacksmith, he is a serious looking young man with a large build, black hair, and a heavy armor, he likes heavy armors and big weapons so much that I never saw him with the same weapon twice, but this time he is carrying a hammer that is giving off some serious aura. Well, every one of us is in their battle dress already. Wolfer's POV. Thank you for calling me over, Wolfer. The young lady returned the greeting to me. She is Nurina's new apprentice and a very strong mage. A monster, just like John. She is a very beautiful lady with jet black hair and unlike the rest of her family who are rumored to be strong swordsmen with light gray eyes like the white moon Secunda, she has crimson red eyes like the red moon Masser. A slash N, a fast reminder, planet Nirn has two moons. The white smaller one is called Secunda or Joan. The red bigger one is Collar Masser or Jode. She is dressed in a crimson dress that matches her eyes and exposes some skin, she also held a black staff that was forged by me and enchanted by Nurina herself as a congratulation present for her success in recreating the wind magic. So, what is the situation? She asked. 
The pirates will be coming from the north, they will face some trouble with the ice that got formed in the sea but that also goes for us. We can't sail the Alexandria. A problem? We are forced to watch the enemy come to us. I don't think we can sail to begin with. Angium took some men and rode to Windhelm, he is the best captain we can rely on. I said. True, but we need you guys to defend the town from above the slope. The bathhouse needs to be defended at all costs. Ilishka said. I don't understand why we should defend that place. It seems like Alina is not seeing the full picture. I think you should take a look at Snovel.Comicron M. Apart from the economical value of the place, we can't spare a lot of money to fix every inch in town after the fight, and the place is currently the healing center for the battle. The bathhouse girls are well trained at both simple healing magic and first aid. Trudvar had to explain. That's why I suggested that you shouldn't go down the slope. We need to force them not to go forward from here. I said. This may seem like the best course of action but once they land and try to climb the slope, their shield bearers will be hard to deal with. Trudvar said. The opinions are split. We both look at Alina. I think you both are right. We can't allow them to land and if they landed, it will be troublesome. That is why we need to stop them from the slope. I will station myself in the middle of the slope so I can retreat much faster and protect the Batho, the healing center. The mages will be with me and we will be able to rain them with magic from our high ground. Good plan? I agree. I also agree. Trudvar liked it too. The healing unit agrees. Ilishka also agreed. How many men we have? Alina looked at the map on the table and asked. 300 as the main force. Our men are around 200 well-equipped men, the Jarl lent us 100 guard. I am leading the main force. Trudvar said. I have a unit of 20 strong men who work with me. I said. 13 healers? The rest 40 are trained in first aid. Ilishka said. And I could invite 30 mages? Svakin will join you, Wolfer. He is bringing the items you asked me to enchant as we speak. Alina said. This is good. This will provide a good surprise attack. When will Angium arrive? Alina asked. If we are lucky then he should be here with a new gunship anytime soon. Trudvar answered. You sure this gun thing will work? Alina asked. It will. A voice came from outside the tent. This was Maran and the core members of the Creation Club. We finished the magic cannons John designed, they will be ready to be installed on the ship once it arrives. Maran said. Maran is a giant Kajiat as tall as me. He is one of the few people who see the charm of John's designs. Alina doesn't seem to hold much hope in a staff cannon that can fire fireball spells on an extremely low cost in a high speed. It sure consumes a lot of soul gems but John said he is after a new idea to power up the magic machines without soul gems. He called it the Technomancy. It was a very old idea from the orphanage but I saw that he gave it to the creation club to research it in secret. Alina revised the plan and made a plan B, C, D. She indeed is a talented a talented girl. Speaking of girls, Bhorna sent me a letter with a fire main ship last week. It seems that the John's master is coming to pick us up. I don't understand why they are so interested in John as he already has another teacher in the rift, that cranky old man, but it is all good to me, I get to see Bhorna once again. You can smile, huh? For some reason, everyone in the command tent noticed me. Ahem, I don't think we can waste time now. I diverted the topic. All right, everyone, you know the plan. Alina said and everyone left the command tent except me and Alina. When will your friend come? She asked. Soon. He created a big mess for us to deal with here. He revived a town. I refuted. That he did. Annoyingly creating amazing things and leaves other to deal with the mess. Same old John to me? You'll get used to it. Still, you should consider coming to the clan with me? Your talents are wasted here. No, thanks. Should I seduce you? I doubt that you even know how to do it. My win, again. My lady, I came. A voice came from the outside. Spaken? You brought it. Here. Spaken is Alina's guard. He is from the same clan as her. Even though they are Nords they all have the same strange narrow grey colored eyes eyes. That clan, for some reason, has a very strange dress code for their guards. The pants are baggy until a bit under the knee then with a high tight boots, for the top they use tight sleeveless shirts and hide their faces all the time. Apart from the weird way they dress, they tend to use the Akavirai weapons. I guess it is part of their heritage. Back to the topic, Svaken brought some chest with him. After he presented it to me, I opened it immediately. Inside, there are 20 pairs of boots and 20 silver rings. They are all here. 20 water walking boots and 20 water breathing rings. I guess your men know how to use with these items. Alina said. Yes, thank you very much. Look, the rings are not a problem if you lose them, but the boots were, the boots were too hard to make. She said with a pale face. I guess it was hard. Still, the only one who will cough blood if he knows how many soul gems you used will be John. Alina face turned into a smiling one and laughed. I am sure my senior is kind person who will forgive me. She said that and went out. Sigh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know how scary Katatosker can be when he loses too much money. Can't we just end this fight fast? I want to go to bed and have a good sleep. Boo! Ring 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 ring. The alarms and the horn? They are here. Izmir? Kine? Guide us? I head out of the tent carrying the my Skyforge hammer that Nyrena enchanted with the lightning blast effect that John loves so much. My armor is not as heavy as always but I still can't go without my shield. The sea ahead of me and a ship is heading our way. It is a big one. 
I was just going to go ahead but I looked to the south. John should be coming from that direction. One last prayer? Sure, bring him soon. 105 over the sea, above the clouds. A slash n, the extra chapters are back for both Skyrim and Relief. To unlock them, check the goals on. We are on the second goal. Two weekly extra chapters for Skyrim. Don't forget to vote. Enjoy hard suit. Wolfers POV. Notch. Loose. Swoosh 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 swoosh. Again. He's hit. Help. A scream sounded. Don't break the formation. Rear troops, take him to the infirmary. Trudvar, the leader of the front shouted. Trudvar, they are coming. Another ship. What? One more? Wolfer? What should we do? Wolfer. Trudvar called to me. Don't retreat. We'll take care of that. Gods guide you, Wolfer. This situation? How did it become like this? It was one ship at the beginning. We managed repel it easily and it didn't land. Then another ship appeared, it stationed itself behind the first ship and threw burning oil kegs at us, that ship had a catapult in its foredeck. And now a third smaller ship appeared, it came from between the rocky waters to the west and started covering the first ship with arrows. Now, we are the ones retreating. These pirates? Wolfer? The lady is retreating to protect the infirmary. Some boats landed to the east and are trying to sneak into the town. Svakin appeared out of nowhere. Shit, take some archers and cover her place. Retreat on the slope to the second defensive line. That's all I can think of. Now, I should at least lessen the burden while the front retreats. I looked at my 20 apprentices and called for them. These guys are the ones who assist with me in the workshop. You guys know what to do. The boots you have and the rings will allow us to take that small ship by surprise. Yeah, good. Their spirits are high. Now, we have one ship trying to land, one small ship attacking us with archers, another small ship with a catapult that throws burning oil on the shore, and now some pirates landed with boats. Only the mages can block the catapult and Alina is the strongest with her wind magic. But now she was forced to retreat? Damn it! If I can take down the small ship of archers, I'll be so damn satisfied. On me. I called for the men and we ran towards the shore. Normal, no one can do anything in a situation like that but we were prepared. Activate the boots. With that order, the twenty did what I said. We are all blacksmiths here so everyone at least knows how to use a magical item. The moment we arrived at the water, our boots carried us as if we were walking on land. A bit slippery but we managed. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. The enemies on the ship didn't take notice us or didn't really care before we walk on the water. Once we walked on the water, we had their full attention. Shoot them. Bastard mages, they walk on water. Their arrows started focusing on us. Hee <laughs> hee, what of it? She yields up. I gave a command. Our run on the water was swift, they can't stop us here anymore, even the volley of arrows was useless against the big round shields. We could reach the ship's hull in less than a minute, everyone is safe. Dome formation. Once I gave the order, all shields covered the squad. The ship was moving slowly. Hey hey hey, bang bang bang. With the thunder hammer in my hands, I started hitting the hull. My goal was simple, open the hull, destroy them from within, sink the ship. Against a magic weapon, the hull was nothing. Only a few hits and a hole was opened. We flooded the ship from the inside. The pirates couldn't put much resistance in this sort of a situation. I guess no one was ever trained on facing armored strongmen breaking into the ship from the hull. The attack was successful. The captain of the ship tried desperately to land but he could only crush on the rocks ahead of the shore. We twenty slaughtered them like sheeps. One problem down three to go. I shouted to let the men know there is no time to rest. Boo! The horn? Why? See, chief. One of my men called. What? You didn't have to jinx it. He said as he pointed towards the sea. Our problems returned four again? That's one big fourth problem. Alina's POV, a little while ago. Spaken? Tell Wolfer I am retreating to the east of town. He need to cover this place with someone. Yes, my lady? I'll go and calm. No, they need you here. I am not going alone. But. No buts? Follow what Wolfer tells you. I shouted at him, he nodded and ran down the slope. Senior Rusning, Svadl, and Holman? Please cover the area ahead. I understand. Senior Rusning complied. I can't order these three around as they are about to become scholars. So I had to go out of my way and request. Morbagog, Maran, and Yaira, you three with me. As fellow students from the same rank, I can boss them around a bit. The situation is not good. We were surrounded by the pirates from the front. The mage unit was the best counter to keep the ships at bay while the ground unit was enough to secure the area ahead. I think you should take a look at snovel.comicronm. Now, the ground unit can't hold their ground due to the heavy attack. And now we are being attacked from behind. The mage unit will face destruction or the infirmary in bathhouse will be endangered. I will have to deal with that myself. I took the slope back to the town and headed to the western area. The place beyond the western area was an open land of snow. A half of a mile away, a unit of 50 pirates can be spotted. They were some fast light infantrymen. Everyone, don't hold back. We summoned the flame horse Atronax and rode against the, the infantrymen. The plan was simple. The first attack should be a strong devastating one. Every one of us called their best spell and overcharged it to the extreme. My spell is wind cyclone, it won't leave anything in place once it strikes. Riders coming. Captain. Shoot them. The pirates didn't see this coming, now, everything. We shot our spells at them. Careful, run. 
Disperse around, don't group in one place. The pirates reacted swiftly but still took a fair damage. I was planning to flatten the ground with them in one go but it seems that their commander is strong. Lady Alina, don't stand, run around them, the Atronax won't tire so make use of it. As the plan was going, we started going around the pirates in an attack with magic. Gah, Morbagog. It was not planned for as the commander of the pirates was fully armored and could withstand magic. More than that he was abnormally fast. Morbagog fell from the flame Atronac horse and barely retreated with his life. I kept him busy from afar by magic. The man got annoyed and looked at me with all the hate in the world. Suddenly, my skin got erected and I felt an awful wave of goosebumps all over my body. Aura Master, here. This is not good. Aura Masters in the ranks of the Blood Horkers pirates only meant one thing. Boo. Another horn? It only means another ship? I looked at the man who started to smile. Damn it. I could understand who are we up against now. My next words marked the start of a bitter day. Retreat to the town. The Blood Sails clan has arrived. John's POV, that morning. Vinok, farewell, Parthurnax. We'll drop by invited next time. Botariak, Dovakian. Parthurnax said in his ancient deep draconic voice and flew back to the summit he meditates on. Hey, Jal. Keep that thing with you. What is that? A pickaxe. Not just any pickaxe. It is the notched pickaxe. Something ancient? A gift for Wolfer. How very thoughtful of you. You meet your friend after a year and all you give him is a pickaxe. This girl? Let's get ready. The road down won't be easy. Yes? We have made some old men seriously angry at us now. I think you misunderstood something? Parthurnax said that enemies are coming for Winterhold. We can't afford to take away full of turns. I don't understand. She doesn't? Well, isn't the shortest way to a point is to take a straight line. I know that genius. But we are on the throat of the bloody world. Don't we have to g? You can't be serious. As she was speaking, I conjured a flame Atronach hawk. Hey, wait. You are not doing it that way. Unfortunately, when I got reincarnated here, the function of the fast travel didn't get reincarnated with me, so, I'll have to turn to the extreme measures. Count me out. I am young and beautiful and sti. Whoa, put me down. Human, let go. Meowny coming. Sorry, girls. This is something we all have to experience. I carried the two troublemakers and put them on the hawk then climbed after them. Ho ho ho, spread your wings and glide us all the way to Winterhold. Naya, don't wanna, dragon, do something. John, I swear, don't do it. It's fun ladies, the secret in the seat belts but we don't have any. No goo. The hawk took a few steps and flew up a bit. Once it got enough altitude, it headed over the summit to the north with the fastest speed it can get. Nay ay 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 no, hoo oh. let's just say this turned out to be a very good idea in the end. During the flight, I could remember something when I was between the clouds, something Hilda wrote in her journal. I am above the clouds, Hilde A. 106 Ride of the Valkyries, 1. Styr's POV. The Blood Sails Capsi. Whoever challenge our clan, kill. Whoever stands on our way, kill. Whoever dare to resist the blood on the sails, kill, 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 kill. They think they can snatch the meat from the mouth of the beast? They deserve a thousand death. Yeah, yeah. Kill the men, throw the children in the sea, and take the women. Ha 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 ha. Yeah ha ha. Whoever bring the head of John Dare, will have his woman. Ha ha ha. I'll bring it captain. We will sweep through them captain. Kill them all. Goo. These barbarians? It will turn ugly for the poor town. Originally, this was a territory of the clan until some fellow by the name of John Dare turned the puppet of a Jarl against us and started to build his own power. I'll admit it. He fooled us and I admire his ways but he is an idiot in the end. He can be swift, smart, and dare all the way he wants but he can't just try to block the tide with brute force. The Blood Sails clan may respond a little bit too late but a response will come. We sent one of our men after him in Donstar and he refused to die quietly. He offended our clan greatly by doing so. We wrote his name on the sails with blood. Those who got their names written are dead people. Well, not entirely dead people, some of them managed to live anyway. I looked at the sails and could read some names that are impossible to touch yet our bride never allowed us to remove them. On the top are the bloody Hilda and the King of Ashes. If I remember, our clan cooperated with some other clans to kill the son of these two. I think I was just a kid by the time it happened. Seriously? The clan is just a bother. They don't stop making enemies with everything in the world. Now, we are in an open fight with a kid from the College of Winterhold just because he stole territory from us. And my father told me to stop being lax and go as the head of the campaign. What is he trying to do? It is only the first day and I am pulling them left and right. Some talents could be seen in their ranks though. A red witch and some brutes that can walk on water. They costed me a ship already. It doesn't matter to me. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. Once the sneaking team attacks them from behind, they are all done for. I don't know why the mages decided to move against us this time. I know that this John Dare is a mage and can't be ordered around by the college's administration because he is being protected by some strong mage. Lucky for me, that mage can't join the fray because she seems to be a core member of the college. They don't interfere with us hidden clans as they can be considered one. Captain Styr, should we move now? Some ask me. Hmm, what is the situation ahead? Karstag landed with the boats you sent him with. 
The Red Witch retreated. How sad. She won't live. I pondered for a while. Fine, let's move. The main ship started to move. With its appearance alone the enemy will fall into disorder. Boo. It was as I said. They sounded the horn and all retreated then fortified themselves on the slope. Just as I thought. It is the best course of action anyway. If they can't stop us from landing, they should stop us from climbing. They have the higher grounds after all. Well, that would be true if only I haven't sent Karstag to attack them from behind. Tell, the front ship to kill those men who can walk on water and prepare to land. Tell them to wait for us and keep Dista. Oh, Karstag is here. Tell them to head to the shores immediately. Karstag's men will attack from the back the moment we attack from the front. Hurry, hurry. I saw Karstag standing above the slope and it seems the enemies haven't noticed him yet. Good. I was worried a bit from that red witch but it seemed he killed her. Hee <laughs> hee. This battle is over. Signal the first ship to land and secure the shore. Yes, Captain. The catapult ship? I want it to go a deeper and clean the slope from those rebels. By your orders, Captain. We, the main force in the third ship, will wait to go full ahead once they kill each other. Understood, Captain. Don't disappoint me. Everyone to their stations, we are reclaiming Winterhold. Yes, that was not a Harad battle. The rebels showed a good fight but in the end they are just rebels in our territory. I don't take pleasure in this but they have forced us to do so. Captain, something happened to Karstag. Eh, uh, he was fine just now. He just gave us a signal that he managed to sneak on the town. Now, we have them cornered. What can possibly happen to him? I took the spyglass that my quartermaster offered me and looked at his direction. Dead. H, how, when? Oh no, the first ship is sailing into an ambush. Damn it, they can't be stopped anymore. We need to rush to their aid. Mew, see. Huh, what is that? Where is it coming from? Music, ride of the Valkyrie. Music? Strange? How can there be something like that in the sea? Captain, the sky. One of my sailor pointed to the sky. What now? These birds. Huh? What's with them? I used the spyglass once again and what I saw made all my body go tense. What kind of sorcery is that? These birds are made of fire. And they are the source of that strange music? I don't understand. They are flying in formation? Three of them are heading to the first ship, three are heading to the second, and... Boom 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 boom. What is going on? Attack. We are under attack, Captain. Where is it coming from? Captain, it is from that faraway ship. How? What kind of? It's fire, Captain. They are shooting fire on us like mages. Fire? From that distance? Ah, uh, they are shooting again. Take cover. I shouted to warn the crew that I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. Music, ride of the Valkyrie. That music is nearer louder? The burning birds are already over our heads. Captain look. One of the crewmen pointed at the sky again. The six birds over the other ships started making weird moves and suddenly changed from their forms into massive chunks of fire. No, oh, and they fell on the two ships. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. What I saw was indescribable. The two ships in the front were no more. The strange ship kept attacking us, but my head had already stopped processing what is going around me. All I could see is the last bird hovering over my ship. When is it going to fall? Chirp, 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 chirp. My expectations betrayed me. Only a blue light with sounds of chirping came from above the bird. Suddenly, a man appeared over the bird and jumped down from it. His body was giving a blue light as if he was the source of it all along. Once he was in the air he fell directly on my ship. Boom. All the ship dangled from that landing. He fell down like bolt of lightning and caused a massive damage to the ship and the crew around where he landed. Once the dangling tensed down. I could see a hooded man in a strange fur armor with a sleeveless mage robe on it. He looked like a barbarian warrior and a storm mage both in the same time. He landed in a kneeling position on his right knee and right fist. He moved his sight to look at us with a fierce smile. Superhero landing? Haha, ha, it sure hurts like hell. Anyway, daddy is home, bitches. Alina's POV, a while ago. Why, why did we have to meet an aura master here? He ran like the wind after us and managed to block our way. Now, he is between us and the town. If we ran to different directions, he will just go and wreak havoc in the town. If we faced him we will pay a hefty price to put him down. But the problem is that his men who are still coming are not far away. Damn it, take him down as fast as possible. We can't afford him to live. This was the only solution I can think of. Hee <laughs> hee, little girl, don't overestimate yourself. The man laughed in a disgusting manner as he took out two swords. Two swords? Against a moon blade? You are testing my honor? I jumped down from the flame Atronach horse and cast a bound sword on each hand. Hee <laughs> hee, girl, you are courting death. The man said as he slashed with his swords at me. Surprisingly, I could evade easily. All he can do is just wave around the blades with no understanding to them at all. How vulgar? I could slash at him few times but an aura master is an aura master after all. All I could do is to delay him for the rest to recover their magicka. Alina, they are coming. I'll hold him down. Take care of them. I was not confident but I will at least buy them a minute. Playtime is over, little girl. Huh. The man said so and all I could feel was myself flying backward. He, he was playing me the whole time? How frustrating. I could hear Yaira fighting the rest of the pirates and calling for me. Their situation is bad. I need to. You should worry about yourself. Ah. Uh. The man kicked me and it felt so painful. 
It felt like I am being shattered. I would have taken you to the young master but it seems your kind of woman would cause us nothing but headache. Just thank me I am killing you quickly. The man raised his sword and... No, Mia a a a Huh? Instead of taking the stab, I heard a cat growling. Ah, ah, ah. Let go, let go. Help the captain. Hurry. What's going on? Wah, undead. Run. What is happening? I could open my eyes and manage to see the scene around me. E. The man I was fighting is being bitten and scratches by a large black cat. It's almost at the size of a wolf. The man's legs and torso were riddled with arrows. Where are they coming from? And why are there undead around me? The undead are armored and attacking the pirates. Are you okay? A feminine voice called for me. I looked at the direction and it seemed like a girl in a hood with gray skin and one sharp eye. The other eye is hidden under her hair. So cool. She is so beautiful. She had a bow in her hand so I guess she is the one who shot the pirate man. Amazing. She put down an aura master with that strange cat. I am fine. Thank you. I took the hand she offered. Looks like everything is over here, Yaira. Eh? Jolinar. Jolinar? John Dare's follower? Where are the cannons? Ah, uh, they are behind the bathhouse. Fine, Anjium has arrived with the new ship. Take this staff, with it you can command these undead to carry the cannons to the ship. Undead? Staff? Team leader orders. Oh, John said so. Yes, there is no time. A big ship is coming and we need the weapons to stop it. I heard the conversation and my head had some hard time to process it. Wait, where is John Dare? I interrupted and asked. The girl called Jolinar and the cat froze at the same time and looked at me, making an appearance. They said. The cat, said. 107 Ride of the Valkyries, 2. A slash N, Skyrim Weekly Extra, 1 half. Enjoy heart suit. John's POV. This looks bad. The pirate commander is one crafty son of gun. He played my men left and right. I've sent Jolinar and Nefertiti to help Yaira, Maran, Morbagog, and that red girl with them. The enemy they are facing is troublesome. From what I saw with Far Vision Spell, the team of four was being chased and got stopped by an aura master. Soon they will be flanked and get overpowered with numbers, that's why I sent Jolinar with some Rathman to finish things and pick the cannons up. Anjium seemed to have arrived but he couldn't go near the shore as the battle was already hectic enough. He barely has enough men to sail the gunship. On the other hand, the pirates were getting prepared for the final assault. They were probably planning to assault my men from the front and the back by a surprise attack from the sneaking. Oh, they are finished already. Jolinar is helping the red girl to stand up in a super cool way. That should have been me but. Oh, so jealous? Hands off my jaw. Never mind that now. I am preparing for my grand appearance. I am arriving to the battle this late so I should look as cool and majestic as possible. Hmm, many scenarios in my head right now. Can't even decide which music theme to go with. Should I go with some death metal or, no, the world is not ready for that yet. System, any suggestions? 168 results. Oh, you are even making it harder. Show me the top 5 results. Play button TESV, Skyrim theme music. Play button Pirates of the Caribbean theme music. Play button Victory is ours, Ward Hunter. Play button Immigrant Song, Led Zeppelin. Play button Ride of the Valkyries, Richard Wagner. Oh, nice choices. Hmm, Skyrim theme? Nope, not this time. Pirates of the Caribbean theme? Can do. What else? Victory is ours? Nah, too Russian. Immigrant Song? Thor has already used it in Ragnarok. Ride of the Valkyries? Hmm, that one is dangerous. It will make the men go crazy. He he he. Zvul.comicron m. Fine, let's use it. I used a spell similar to Mage Light and called it Mage Speaker. It can produce the sound I want wherever I attached it on. By linking it to the media player of the system, I can make it as loud as I want. And all what is left is the entrance. I prepared seven Flame Adronach Hawks for solely for it. Speaking of the Flame Adronach Hawks, my reckless action of going down the throat of the world proved to be very beneficial. I could gain a lot of understanding about flying now. I managed to put some minor edits on the hawks by making the wings longer and wider as well as fixing the tail a bit. I managed to make a flame adronach hawk that can fly higher than I could do before. Now, I guess I can fly over the altitude 100 meter with no problems. I also added a new function to the flame adronachs. It was already there but I made it more intense. Whenever a foul adronach gets destroyed, its body explodes. So I thought why not to tweak it a little bit? It was an old idea but I could do it better this time now that I have a spell like meteor and a hawk form for the adronach. So instead of the crap function that causes a simple explosion in with destruction, I can now make the flame Adronach Hawk self-destruct by gathering a lot of magics and transform into a meteor. With that, everything is ready for my grand entrance. Now, it's Joel's turn, Alina's POV. I think I heard the cat saying something but it was my imagination. I am sure of it. I must be too exhausted. Stupid cat, leave that man's corpse intact. We need it to look whole. Jolinar was speaking to the large black cat which seemed to understand very well. I will be taking the man's corpse for the ambush. You guys help Captain Angium to fix the cannons on the gunship. Yaira and the rest nodded right away. Wait, I will come with you. I spoke before she leaves. Eh, won't they be needing your help? Jolinar asked me. You gave them enough undead to carry the cannons and I don't understand magic machines anyway. Fine, we should move fast. She said that and evoked a conjuration spell. 
so she will conjure a flame at Ronak horse, huh? I shouldn't lose in that. I also conjured one but when both appeared, I felt something can't be compared. Her horse was tall and nimble much different than my bulky horse. So John Dare didn't share the full spell, huh? It is a very useful spell but no one could decrypt it at all. John Dare is taking a full monopoly over the runes of the spell. Anyway, I rode with Jolinar to the edge of town then she jumped from her horse, dragged the corpse down and cast spell on it. The corpse moved and started to stand up. Necromancy? In the open like that? She sure is bold. The corpse seemed to be hard to control as Jolinar was using a lot of magic to control it. I guess the corpse of an aura master should be a bit hard to control. It is still filled with residual energy from the soul. Just as she could control it, she made the corpse walk to the edge of the slope and waved to the pirate ships. Wait, what does this mean? I suddenly freaked out. Why are they telling the pirates to attack us? Just wait for it. Anytime now. She was so focused on something and didn't look at me. Music, Ride of the Valkyries. Huh? What is that? Music? What is going on? He's coming. Jolinar said. By he. Could it be? John Dare. Yes. The music is his first move. How? How can he make music by magic? A spell he calls Mage Speaker. The same idea of Mage Light but the aspect is sound not light. Wait. What? Is? Is that even possible? My head hurts. I knew John Dare is a genius researcher so I should try to not get surprised from now on. Music getting louder. The music sounds nice. To produce such music with magic, I don't think that is actually possible. What secrets are you hiding, John Dare? Everyone, the boss is back. Suddenly, Jolinar let go of the corpse that collapsed and shouted at the men on the slope. By that time, the first ship of the pirates started moving to the shore, but some strange phenomenon occurred. The men were. The boss, he is back. Finally, we are saved. Sob sob I thought I was a goner. Let's show these pirates. Hey, listen. That sound. I think you should take a look at snovel.cmicron m. Wait, is there a bard? I don't know. I just hear it and I want to fight. Look at that. By the gods? Burning birds. Yes, they are making the music. Burning birds? Like the burning horses the mages use. I know, I know. I used to live in this town before you guys. The first one who rode the burning horses was the boss. He then taught it to the other mages. Wait, you are saying. Those burning birds are the new creatures the boss can make. Gods? The boss became stronger once again. Is Mir's beard? We will sweep those pirates like nothing. Yeah, the boss is back we can't be afraid. Music getting even louder. Ah, my soul is burning. The burning birds can make such a beautiful singing. You idiot, the birds are called Atro something they can't sing. The boss is making the sing with his magic. Is it like the battle bards and the scalds of old? I knew the boss is mighty. I can't stop. I want to kill a hundred pirate now. Here he comes. The boss is riding a burning bird. Shore's bones? The boss is flying. Follow the boss. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. For the boss. Savengard. What in oblivion is happening? The men who were fighting since the morning are getting crazy? What's wrong with them? We can't stay lax. Leave me. I am all healed. Follow the boss. SOVN cough cough SOVN grade cough cough. Wait. These guys were in the infirmary? Why are they coming out? They are all beaten up? Ha ha ha. Oh girl. Did you see that man? This is your boss. The man I lo. Ahem. The man we follow? Cut his enemies to pieces. Ateaok. Even Jolinar who was calm like a silent hunter a moment ago became like this? Was it John Dare? Or the music? This is dangerous. This town is nuts. Red girl. Jolinar looked at me with a fierce smile. It's Alina. I refuted. Alina? Beautiful name? I feel you are a strong mage. I am John's partner but he is going to make a strong attack from the air now. Let's support each other. What sort of fighting spirit is that? She is even crazier than the other people. Why? 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 Yes. Let's go. I was shaken by her fighting spirit. Men? Follow me. She shouted and rushed down the slope. It's Jolinar. Lady Jolinar you idiot. Follow the lady boss. Kill the pirates. Kill them all. I followed Jolinar and part of her madness started getting to me. At first I just wanted to defend the people but there was something missing. When I led the men with Wolfer and the others, we were focused on defending the town, but John Dare and Jolinar offered the people another alternative. Don't kill the enemies to repel them, kill the enemies to annihilate them. This is, this is just crazy. It may seem wrong to needlessly kill but it is more wrong to kill half-heartedly. I was wrong, huh? I looked at the girl in front of me who was shouting at the men to rally up. I looked at the man who is riding an Adronach hawk. I get it, I so get it. That is what I am looking for. They are strong, so strong. They are as strong as Darth Vader, maybe even stronger. I want to see it. The flame Adronach hawks flew after John Dare's hawk in a formation where John Dare was in its center and then flew near the enemy ships. Suddenly, the six of the flame Adronach hawks around John Dare slowed down and straight changing then turned into huge chunks of fire. They fell on the two ships near the shore. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. You've gotta be kidding. The ships are no more. The cease to exist. This power. No mercy. No forgiveness. I was shaken to my core. I felt it in my soul. The pirates who managed to jump from the ships and reach the shore were all massacred by the arrows of Jolinar and the axes of the men. I didn't even have the time to cast magic. 
to think his appearance wouldn't just turn the tide, but sweep the whole damn rise. What more can you do, John Dare? Show me, in the name of Kine, I, Alina Moonblade, shall witness it all. As if he heard me, he turned his hawk and flew to the main enemy ship. Alone? So tyrannical? He is going to do it like. Boom. No, he jumped and used shock magic to fall like a bolt of lightning. The ship he fell on shook and screams echoed. This is madness, he is facing them alone. I wondered out loud. It is useless to outnumber him but let's take no chances. Jolinar replied then looked around. Trudvar, bring us a ship. Ah, eh? Lady Jolinar? The Alexandria is there. Good, we are going after John. 108 Ride of the Valkyries, 3. Styr's POV. Boom. Superhero landing? Haha, ha. it sure hurts like hell. Anyway, daddy is home, bitches. Crack crack cray ee ee ack. Splash. The foresail got broken then fell down in the water with a loud creaking sound. Oh, thought was broken before I landed? Totally not my fault here. The man who landed on the ship like a bolt of lightning spoke to himself. He is a tall man wearing a fur armor under a sleeveless robe that was fluttering with the wind, his arm was exposed and only covered in bracers, he was also wearing a hood but his head showed some long red strands of hair. And he is very powerful, the ship was still shaking up and down from his landing just now. Eee, eek, monster, no, gee, get away. The crewmen around the place where the man landed started shouted and crying in hysterical manner, what is that? He got to their heads this foz. No, that's an aura, he is an aura master. The man looked at the crewmen collapsing around him with an astonished expressions. Hey, I am no monster. I am a good person. Here let me help you stand up. The man said so and approached one of the crewmen but to find him already fainted. Oh, how sad. To mistake me for a monster. He made another self monologue. I admit that I do kill sometimes, or maybe more than I should. Actually, I kill a lot. But point is, I don't kill people. See, I only kill monsters. He was walking while talking and the crewmen were retreating. Now, our dear little merry band of pirates. What the fuck are you doing in my turf? The man looked at us and asked. This crazy person? Where did he come from? Don't be afraid, man. He is only using magic, don't fear magic, he is only one man. My old quartermaster saw the hesitation on my face and started rallying the men. I am thankful but I think I am still worried. Kill him. Kill him before the others arrive. The men were finally getting their cool back but. Why a a it The man raised his hands and shouted. Everyone waited for some reason. You guys got me? I admit it. I was only using some illusions. What? No that was an aura, you are just not emitting it anymore. I wanted to refute but the man kept talking. Zvul.comicron m. To think you guys can notice it on your own. Bravo, amazing, everyone, pat on the back, pat on the back pat pat. I salute you, guys. What is he doing? You guys are already outnumbering me like, a whole damn ship to one, but I will not fall easily and you know that. I can take a lot of you down before you manage to kill me. The man said that as his aura started to rise steadily. But I have a better solution. He said, I will ask you guys a question, and if any one of you answers correctly, I'll surrender. What? Is he crazy? He is playing dumb. I can tell. The question is, three words, eight letters, you say them, and I surrender. Eh? Is he, is he in the right mind? What kind of dumb question is that? We have over a hundred man, someone must have heard it. Wait, this guy, he is. He is smart. He is asking us a question about literacy. Most of the pirates here can't even read or write. They are already looking at each other and being overwhelmed by the man. Some of them are even looking at me for an answer, damn it, I know how to read and write but, but if I can't answer such a simple question then my image, it will be tarnished, I should answer, no, I must to answer, this is bad, how can he put us in such a situation with only words, this guy is not an easy opponent, I know it, one of our men shouted, really, let me hear it, before he could answer I interrupted, a hundred gold if you answered right, this was all I can offer, he <laughs> he, men will do anything if I offered such a reward, haha, <laughs> thank you, captain. The answer is, I got gold. Smart? Wrong. The man said making an X with his arms. Eh? Uh, right. Why would he surrender to that? I got food. Wrong. I got mead. Another time perhaps. It's a trap. Sigh. I wish. Carrot hashtag and dollar at at yen euro. Wrong. Carrot hashtag and yen euro unspecified currency at. Wrong. Carrot hashtag and dollar at at yen euro. Wrong. Carrot hashtag and dollar at at yen euro. Wrong. It's all wrong. No matter what we said. This guy sure is not going to ask an easy question. How can this be? I, STYR blood sale, was completely bested in smarts? I am really Asha. John, what are you doing? Eh? Jal, you arrived? I was buying you time for you guys to arrive, why so late? I think you should take a look at snovel.comicron m. Eh? E? E? Impossible? How? How could he? That's not possible? How? We didn't see them arrive? No one? Not those who are on the lookout? Why? We, we were sneaked on by a ship? Impossible? It can't be TR. You must be wondering how did this happen? The man who appears to be John Dare, the one who caused the Jarl of Winterhold, Koror, to rebel on us, he was talking to me. How? You noticed right? When I landed on the ship and your men went into hysteria. 
How did this? Fu fu fu, I'll tell you. The kind of aura I am proficient in is a one that can affect minds. I simply can make you all go insane just by my presence. So if I can just steal your mind that way, I can easily steal you attention. You guys were abnormally focusing on the question I asked, right? Insane? This guy? Dangerous? The clan needs to know. They must dispatch the blood fleet. He is dangerous. He he he. Amazing, isn't? I actually discovered this technique very lately. I call it taunt. You sir has just been taunted. John, are you finished? Let's kill them. A girl on the other ship was shouting to John Dare. They totally outnumbered us now. Wait just a second, Jal. I still haven't answered the question I asked them. What? He is waiting for that? Three words? Eight letters? They are. Fuss. No. R-O. Run. Da. John's POV. Imagine if someone using the unrelenting force shout from the front of a ship aiming at everything on the deck. Well, it is hard to describe what happened but the ship was disfigured in one go. The sails fell and some of the pirates were in the sleeping with the fishes by now. The others were affected by the shout and my men just cut them down. The only survivors are the young captain and about seven of his men. They all became disabled from being directly hit by the Thursday um. But I was completely focusing on something else. Wolfer, you old dog, let me take a look at you. Huh, do I know you, sir? Eh, it is me. Haven't met before. Angium, do I look strange? You do? Who are you? I've mistaken you for the boss. Gee, guys, it is me. Yaira, Maran. Sorry. Morbagog. Have we met before? It, it can't be. Friend, maybe we've met somewhere so I am sure we will remember soon. Your looks are hard to miss, haha. <laughs> anyway, have you seen the boss? You landed on the ship after him right? No, they didn't recognize me, right? My appearance has changed. It also seems that the guys from the gunship arrived later than the Alexandria. No way, even after the grand entrance? It was all for nothing. Maybe that's a sign from the universe? The middle finger sign. Anyway, I had to beat up Angium until he recognized me by my fist. The same went for the rest. Wolfer, your turn. John, please, haha. We were messing with you, it was Angium's idea. Fu fu fu, my brother just don't mess with me and get away with it, especially my brother. Fu fu fu. That Angium, extra beating, after a while of messing around, the reunion was complete and we moved to the gunship. Gentlemen, to the matter at hand. I announced, but before we do that, how tall have you become? Angium asked. 6.8 feet. That's taller than this one. Maran said. He is a Kathirat Kajiat. They are known to be more panther-like than cat-like. Can we get back to the matter in hand? Yes, yes. Wolfer said. But before that, how did you do it? It seems that the bloodline I hail from is ridiculously tall. To the matter at hand, what should we do with the prisoners? It seems that the captain's name is STYR Blood Sail. Pretty troublesome if you ask me. Angium said. I don't like to leave loose ends. I said. We can just take him as a prisoner. Wolfer said. The Blood Sail clan will come avenge him either way. He is the son of an elder in that clan. Trudvar said. How do you know about him? I asked. Oh, boss, I was the one dealing with the security and I also held the interrogations during the last few months. He said. Aha, uh -huh, so you are the one who make them like this and like that. As long as it is necessary, boss. Damn, to think this baby face can do all that. Alongside me, there are Trudvar, Angium, and Wolfer standing in front of the prisoners. We were deciding what to do with them. John. Joel popped out from somewhere. MHM. There is this girl. She wants to speak with you. Who is she? Well, that girl in red you sent me to save. It seems she is the girl we met on Mount Anther. Eh? Crimson something. Yes. Sigh. Fine. Bring her in. 109 Winterhold after the battle. A slash N. Sorry for the delay. A personal matter popped up. My name is Alina Moonblade. I am honored to meet with you, Senior John. A girl in a red dress with black hair and red eyes followed after Jolinar. She was putting on a face cover like last times. Before she comes, they guys reported to me that she started helping with the pirate problem the day they started provoking the town openly. It was almost three months ago. They also said that she doesn't show her face and all that. And once she requested to see me, they all started winking like idiots. Well, I already knew about her a little. I wasn't planning to get mixed with her kind, the hidden clan kids kind, before I have a full understanding of the politics of these people, but she came out of her clan and got mixed with Nurana, I guess I'll have to deal with her sooner or later. Now, I was meeting her in the gunship where we were keeping the eight prisoners. Nice to meet you, as fellow evil minions to Nurana, we can call each others by name. Pft, ahem. She lost her cool and laughed for some reason but she regained her composure quickly. Did I say anything funny? Once again my name is Alina and I am glad to meet you, John. Nice to meet you too, Alina. Now it's less awkward. I may not have a say in this but regarding the prisoners you have, what will you do with them? She asked. I looked at the people around which were the key figures in town, Trudvar, Angium, Wolfer, and Jolinar. From the look on their faces, they were all very happy with Alina. Before I answer, I would like to say that you earned the right to have a say as you won the trust of everyone in this room and the report I heard showed how much effort you put in protecting this town, you have our thanks. I said in a polite tone. Oh, ahem, I was only doing the right thing. Thank you once again. Now, about your question. 
I am actually having a problem deciding what to do with them. I could tell. The one you are holding is Styr Bloodsail, the youngest son of Bervac Bloodsail, the clan's patriarch. Oh headache. I said. This is worse than we thought. Killing him will bring all of that clan's anger on us, letting him go will expose John's strength to them and also they will come for vengeance. Wolfer said. So the public execution I was thinking about is no more, damn it. Anjim said. What should we do then? Trudvar asked. To a clan like the Blood Sail, you guys are still not strong enough. You indeed delivered a fatal blow to them and it will take them a long while to recover from it. But remember, only only one master warrior appeared in this battle, the one I was saved from. The Blood Sail clan has more than just that low-leveled aura master as well as a lot of mages. Low-leveled? A lot of mages? Are we up against some cultivation sect or something? What is your suggestions? I asked. Being responsible for his death is already a bad idea. He will die soon anyway, the signs said so. Signs? Wait a single minute? By any chance, you can use divination. Oh, I can, it is a bit inaccurate but looking at his conditions, he is pretty much done for. Oh, I am not focusing at anything she said. Divination? How envious? This is a very unique gift. I call it a gift because it is something like my dragonborn soul. Only those who are born with it can wield it. Of course there are spells that can use the aspect of divination like clairvoyance but they are nothing compared to the real deal. Just like the difference between a normal voice master and a dragonborn. Alina can tell that this STYR kid will die soon. Zvul.Ciomicron M. Sigh, looks like a fight is inevitable. Hmm, hey, what day is today? I asked. The 28th of evening star, December, why? Alina said, well, we may not have to do it after all. Anjium, take them and throw them back on their ship. Huh, why? They all blinked and asked. Just do it. John, you are letting them go. Wolfer asked. Look at them, do they look like anyone who can go anywhere? The ship Theo have is too big for them eight to sail even if they are in their best conditions. Plua the ship is too damaged? Just let them for now, they won't live. What are you planning? Alina frowned and asked me. Huh, not saying, I will spoil the fun this way, let's just all leave. They all started nagging for a while but it was no big deal. I just left a gift for someone else to vent their anger on. Now, I guess I should just head back to the town. Boss, he is here. Boss, 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 boss. The fuck is going on? These guys, did I start some sort of religion or anything? I didn't, did I? Two little girls are giving me flowers? Oh, how cute. The people opening a path for me to my manor? Guys, I am so deeply touched. But I am not good with all this attention. I am moving like a wooden doll for some reason. I used to fight in an arena before but this is so embarrassing. I walked and was followed by my friends and men. Things are pretty hectic in my mind but I managed to reach home. Behind the main gate some people who appeared to be the guards appeared and closed the gate behind me. The beautiful place around is filled with snow now. It has been a while since I made a snowman. But let's do that alone. I entered the house and was surprised by how clean it is. Not even a grain of dust was seen. Mistress Elishka came with some girls to clean the place two days ago, we were anticipating your arrival. Trudvar said, good job, looks like rewards shall be thrown left and right now, I will see to that. I am handling some of the accounts and Mistress Elishka is handling the others but it will be a bit hard to deal with all that. Oh, I will review the ledgers later. Need to rest my aching body first. Ah, the place is too warm. It's a nice house indeed. Alina commented. Seems like that guy who was with her in Mount Anther, Skywalker, joined as well. Well, make yourself at home. I think you should take a look at Snovel.Ciomicron M. Everyone put their weapons on the ground and found a chair to rest on. Ah, uh, home sweet home, knock knock knock. Who is it? Trudvar went to see who's knocking. Sir, it is Mistress Ilishka and some other business owners asking to meet the boss. Trudvar looked at me and I nodded. Send them in. In the room, there are Jelinar, Wolfer, Anjim, Trudvar, Alina and Skywalker on a side. The other side had Ilishka, Dagur the innkeeper, the mine owner, the head mason, the master huntsman, as well as some important people in the hold. Why am I sitting on this big chair in the middle? You guys didn't appoint me as a Jarl, right? I asked. Well, you already own most of the properties in town and the land you own is massive, add to that the number of the guards who work for you that has exceeded the number of the Jarl's guards already. Why do you think we should deal with that useless person to begin with? Ilishka signed. You made a good thing here, Boss John. Don't worry about such a Jarl. The mine owner said. The town already belongs to Boss John, even the Imperial garrison in the south deal with us to get supplies. The master huntsman followed. And many people who had bad living conditions around the area has all migrated to Winterhold. Don't forget the young ones who applied in the college to follow the footsteps of Boss John. And this happened. And that happened. Oh boy, if I remember correctly, I was only making a humble investments and a small business with the things I have in hand. Now I am the tycoon of Winterhold. I kept looking at the ledger in front of my. It was organized the way I taught the Ilishka how to do it. Numbers and charts filled the pages and I could understand what happened in the past four months. Holy mud craps. What the hell did you guys do? We are too rich. Too damn rich? Did people want to work that much? I totally underestimated the work I have done here. My properties that I obtained its land by with a few hundred gold septims is now worth more than 40,000 gold septims. 
My guards and spare sailors that I keep around unofficial hired are about 300, and the workers has increased many times. It is still not enough boss John, the headmason said. Glove not enough, I said as I could feel my head becoming light. Yes, the town needs solid defenses, and a lot of people need to have houses as they mostly live in rundown ones. Also the immigrants need housing, he replied. Just kill me already, we need to expand the inn, boss John. It used to fit the small town, but now that there are a lot of customers, the innkeeper said. We also need some barracks for the men. Trudvar said, a market square, Wolfer, more trading ships, Angium, a temple, Alina, okay, I get it, but I don't have a brain to deal with all that alone, where is Isolde when we need her, Wolfer sighed, ah, uh, Isolde's brain is made of numbers, she can think of every legal and illegal way to make and spend money, but we need to rely on what we have in hands now, fine, let's speak throw this problem on someone else, ladies and gentlemen, the situation seems to be a bit getting out of hand with the pirates problems and all the things that has been happening. I know you couldn't wait as the situation is turning critical by the day and a solution need to be found. In my opinion, we should work with what we have in hand. A year ago this town was a ghost town compared to what it is today, the solution in this time is the same as always. You, the sons and daughters of this town are the best solution for the future. I gambled on you once and I won so here I gamble again. We can't establish something official like a town hall to deal with this matters but we can get permission from the Jarl to deal with all these matters, not as John Dare or as any individual, but as a one entity, one solid being. I can't deal with this problem alone as you all know, I am a student of the arcane arts, but I am very confident in you, you were the partners who put their blood and tears to build the beautiful thing we have today, it can't be me alone, this is why I arrived at a vital conclusion, we must unite ourselves into one more capable machine, a machine that only knows how to push forward, I am suggesting that we build a cooperation, an association of the businessmen and workers in this town to work under a single, organized and multi-personnel management, I suggest a business company, I, 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 well said, boss. Amazing. We agree, no disagreement. Few few few. Success. Boss, I can nominate some names for the first patch of management personnel. Ilishka said. Oh, please. Many of the girls are now proficient in the skills of literacy and calculating. I relied on them and they will prove to be of use. Oh good. You also promised them when you were hiring us a year ago that the first best opportunity that comes will be theirs. I remember. Haha, <laughs> this is great. We have the personnel we need. Let's make a plan now and put the big ideas together. Ahem. Before we start, I would like to ask a question. Alina talked. By all means, what will you call the company? Attach the word dragon with anything good and we will go with it. Fufu. She laughed faintly. I realized what have I done a second later. Everyone in the room is giving the same laugh. This will be a fight over the name of the company. A slash n, a fight you readers shall solve in the comments. 110 The Dare Dragon Group. I said no, I will never call it that way. Why do you always say no to the names I come up with? I have a new idea. The Horny Drago. Zip it, John. Dragon Dreams. Feels homo. Imagine dragons. I love that band, leave it out of this. Winter Dragon. We said no like a hundred time already. Golden Dragon Trading Company. I have read that name in some Chinese novel before. I eat dragons. Feels like I heard it somewhere. Knock knock knock. Trudvar went to open the door. Boss, a courier. Let him in. A few seconds later, a short guy came into the room following Trudvar. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver, your hands only. He mumbled a bit while looking in his bag. Let's see here, ah. Uh? A letter. From who? A guy called himself Iako. Creepy fella, dressed in an orange suit and a gas mask, holding a flamethrower. Oh, thanks. John paid the courier and sent him on his way. After opening the letter he saw this, the Dare Dragon group. Looks like we got ourselves a name, everyone. I said and showed the letter to the others. Oh, the boss name and the word dragon? How couldn't we think of that before? Well, let's go with that name from now on. John declared while standing up. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. Everyone stood up and congratulated each others. A slash N, special thanks to Iako for suggesting the name. Thanks for all who suggested the other names too. Iako won by the score of 24 likes. Alina's POV. We finished the meeting in the sea mist manner at evening and everyone went on his way. The town was exhausted as everyone were contributing in today's fight. Everything was quiet and peaceful. Tomorrow, John Dare decided to hold a funeral for the brave soul that departed to Savangard. May kind guide them? What do you think, Alina? Svakin who was with me the whole time finally spoke. It is rare for him to call me by my name. He used to do so a long time ago when we were young. It has been a while. What do I think about what, Svakin? I answered as my head was having a hard time focusing on one issue. I mean what do you think about John Dare, the situation of Winterhold, that company he intends to build, and everything. Sigh, where should I begin? I said as I started to feel a real headache from thinking about his questions. I kept walking until I reached the stone bridge of the college and didn't stop until I reached a point where I can see the sea clearly. It was lit by the moonlight and felt beautiful. There are many things I want to know myself, Svakin, to many questions that needs to be answered about him. Can I get your opinion at least? Cousin, you're asking for a lot. 
I turned my head and saw him smiling. Guess I'll answer. I remembered the face of the tall young man who has a long red hair and a small early beard. He was wearing a strange fur armor and wore an open sleeveless robe. Pretty stylish in my opinion. I think he is an interesting person. He is a powerful mage who is always prepared to go on frenzy to save his town. Let's assume that his theory of magic is far advanced beyond the flame atronach variations and the mysticism spell casting. He is proficient in destruction as you could see the way he landed from his flame atronach hawk like a bolt of lightning. He can use the Thursday um too, which I am not sure where he could learn it if he doesn't belong to High Hrothgar or a hidden clan already. But regarding the rest if his personality, it is not bad at all. He is not afraid but he is very careful. He loves to do things with style but not too lavish himself. How honest he is. Not honest at all. Haha. <laughs> I said as I remembered that moment, when they told him about the management work that needs to be done, he looked composed but he was crying in his heart. He probably suggested the company idea to get rid of that workload. I bet he will only make the big decisions and sit back to watch the work gets done by others. Haha, <laughs> I like the way he thinks, but what do you think about this company? Svakin said, it will work. He seemed already able to make it happen. He said some ideas that felt rather strange but he put down a goal to every department in the company with a future plan and a lot if upgrading options. The type of cooperation he intends to make is almost as if he is trying to make a company of investment to control other smaller companies and make a firm reign over them. I don't know how he managed to buy the Jarl but let's try to say that he is having the Jarl as his puppet now. So making such a company is actually stepping into the right direction as taking the role of the Shadow Jarl. Shadow Jarl? There is something like that. Well, there are the Silverblad in Markarth and the Blackbriar in Riften. They are the Shadow Jarls. And now, John Dare is the Shadow Jarl of Winterhold. The company will take a lot of rights from the Jarl for most of the lands, mines, and everything in the hold. Our lands is in the hold, and the Firemanies should have a say in this too. This town used to be theirs once. True? Before the Great Collapse, Grandpa Termond Firemane used to live here. But after it, things changed, Svakin. The people have the right to live and the Firemanies has no say in this place anymore. You just don't like the Firemanies, Svakin said. Humph, I don't hate them but I am not forced to get marry someone I don't know just because he is six feet tail, has a curly red hair and walks around with an animal sidekick. Somehow I didn't want to continue. Hey, doesn't John dare fit that description? Svakin said what I just thought of. Yes, I just realized it. Thank you for pointing it out. He is not a fire main, right? I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. I know all the fire main kids. They are not interested in anything but fire, big weapons, fire again, ships, more fire, and raising beasts. John Dare is an electromancer and a conjurer? He is also a researcher which doesn't fit the description of a fire main male at all. Yeah, I heard they are obsessed with the path of dragon knights. Of course they do. Put anything that burns in front of them and you will be their favorite person in the world. Ha ha ha, you really don't like them. Let's just get going before, what is that? I was about to say something but I saw something in the sea, something is burning. Looking at the direction, I used far vision spell that Master Nurana gave me and I saw, the blood sail ship that we left in the sea, it was burning. Who did that? I increased the magic eye output to see further ahead. After stabilizing the vision, I saw another large ship next to it. Some men were burning the blood sail ship and killing the people we left on it. It was brutal. I combined far vision with night vision and saw something I didn't want to see. Damn you, Svakin. What? Why? You kept saying fire main this and fire main that look who we conjured this time. Don't tell me, the fire mainies. Who else, ice brain? Izmir? Let me see, let me see. I cast night vision and far vision on him. Oh, that's indeed a fire main ship? Hmm? Crimson Moon, do you know which ship is that? I saw it once before. Which ship is that? This is, this is the Guilty Crown. Svakin said in hesitation. Glove the Guilty Crown. Yes, the most damned ship in the Sea of Ghosts. The ship of your most favorite fire main. Oh crap, Kine, do something about this? Svakin, where is the farthest end of Nirn? Maybe locking your chamber is the best way to solve it this time? You know she always catches you. N.A., don't wanna? I will run. No, I will go to Master Nurana and sell my soul to her? John said it may work. Your call, my lady. Let's run. John's POV. Everyone went home except for Wolfer and Elishka. Elishka showed me the new hot tub that I requested to be built in the underground area. There was also some bags of gold that I had to move in the vault. The place got some remodeling and it was rather nice. I also found some of Wolfer's works lying around in the training room. He made some tools that I asked for. Trapping harpoons, crossbows, hand ballistas. Most of them were still under the prototype category. To tell the truth, I was trying to make some anti-dragon weaponry but after I met with Parthornax, all that work will go down the drain. I still need to examine some Dwemer machinery to get an impression of how they made the automatic reloading crossbows. Lastly, the magic cannons on the gunship weren't effective as I thought, which means they are useless against dragons. I need to remake the designs once again. Last time I focused on rate of fire but this time let's not worry about that and make it into something absurd. I also added a design for a new magical weapon, it is the good old Tesla Tower. I will go speak with Jarl Korer tomorrow and get his consent for providing us with a long-term investment contract and a monopoly of some crafts over the hold. 
I hope you prepare as much workforce as possible. Yes, I already have few choices. Hmm, are we going to meet in my office anytime soon? Oh, I turned to look at Ilishka who was smiling at me. I held her from her waist and pulled her to me. She is now a lot shorter than before. I also was thinking about coming, you know. I was about to flirt with her but I heard some noise upstairs. Not now, Ilishka. The universe is not giving its consent. Hee <laughs> hee, fine, I'll be busy the next couple of days so let's celebrate the new year together. Yes, let's just see what's going on upstairs first. I went upstairs followed by Ilishka and we arrived at the scene of Wolfer and Jolinar standing against each other and glaring at each other. Don't tell me, I completely forgot. John, what is that girl doing here? Wolfer shouted at me. Ops, he is angry. Listen, bro, I'll explain everything, just calm down. How do you want me to calm down? This is the assassin that went after you. Assassin. Ilishka jumped back. I know, just listen to the story and you will understand everything. Does Nurana know? Yes. Humph, tell me everything from the start or else. Fine, fine, geez. I forgot that Wolfer has that motherly side. I guess I'll tell him everything. 111 The Firemanies are here. A slash N, an extra chapter. This week two halves. Enjoy hard suit. So let's revise what you said from the very beginning. That girl tried to kill you, the thieves guild asked you to solve the problem, you infiltrated Castle Dewar and made a contact with her, with Rusning you were the ones who killed Sibai Blackbriar, and after you left the city you returned back to set fire in the castle and break her out, now you guys are lovers. Wolfer was getting bigger and bigger for some reason, he was truly in the mood to scold me, hmm, amazing, right? No one except me can pull such a thing off, I said trying to make the situation look better, yeah, you are right, no one is idiot enough to pull such a thing off, he was not going to let it go at all, sigh. I thought you are the one with a brain among us, John. Wolfer said as he finally got tired. With a brain? Come on, let's see. I am a multitasking cat lover magic casting freak. You have some sort of steel fetish. Akara is a Kajiat who doesn't fluff. Isolda is a coin digger. Svidi has developed a third personality by now. Whose fault were these? Not me. Really? Let's see. I was a healthy young man until you started showing me these weird tools from your so-called past life. Akara got creeped out by your cat fetish until she learned how to talk the way humans do. Isolde absorbed so many ways of making money from you until she lost her common morals. Svidi's songs are no longer the normal stuff bards sing. Every time he spoke I lower my head more. I could only raise my hand and whimper, guilty. Oblivion, you are. His anger seemed to be less than before. Sigh. Once again. Jolinar, this Wolfer, my brother. Wolfer, the is Jolinar, my girl. I made a proper introduction. They were still glaring at each other. It was Jill who tried to kill me once, and it was Wolfer who hit her with a hammer and sent her flying. I am this guy's brother? He is a kind idiot who forgives people for the strangest reasons? I heard you have done well to this town so I will overlook the past, for now. I am John's faithful follower? You may think of me whatever you want, I don't care. Humph. Sigh. Kids. John, what's with that giant cat this morning? You cheated on Akara that fast. Fufu? You mean Nefertiti? A cute little thing, isn't she? A cute little thing that killed three pirates in less than a second? I am not able to keep up with you anymore? What's her story? Well, it started like this. I started telling him my story with Nefertiti since the day we met when I rescued her until the thing with Herson. Damn, my life was compared to yours. Except for the part about Bhorna, of course. Once she was going to leave, Anjiam came and saved me from the boredom. Good for you, bro? How is your life in our town? Never dull, brother. Your friends from the Creation Club are something else? They have a lot of your work and the things we build are all around your basement. Oh, about that. I started giving wool for my new requirements. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. Stronger? Come on, what's your game? I want stronger magic cannons that can be fixed on the defenses we are about to build. I want the pirates to be killed in the sea before they ever set foot on land. Even if we can build such a thing. Not even the Soul Gems Mine and the Hunt Squad can provide us with such amount of filled Soul Gems. I grinned. Who said anything about Soul Gems? Wolfer went home after we had a few drinks that night and I went to bed. The next day, a large ship carrying the banner of a lion with a mane of fire was spotted near the shoreline. The blood sail ship was nowhere to be seen. Hee <laughs> hee, as expected, the firemanies are here. They followed the rules of the official docks and wouldn't come to the dock until the first light. Well, we are no official dock yet but thanks. I gave orders to give them the permission to dock right away. After that, I got dressed in some civil clothes and went to see Nurina. She was nowhere to be found but when I asked around, I learned that she was summoned by Savod Aaron, the Archmage. I only had to wait for her in her chambers then. Putting thoughts into actions, I headed to the Hall of Countenance. Some people I know didn't recognize me at all. I guess that's given due to my appearance change. Well, the seal of Nurina that I have can take me anywhere. Just as I reached her chambers, I discovered it was magically locked with different method than Nurina's usual. I can break through it but it seems there is someone inside. The magic signal is not bad but it is far weaker than Nurina. Nurina's magic signal can cause me to throw up if I try to detect it. It is just massive. Anyway, let's wait in the lobby. I put my hood on so people stop looking at me and found some place to sit. 
A few minutes later, Nurana showed up followed by Alanath and Feralda. I went up and stood near the place they are walking. Hey, beauties. I said in a provoking tone. Hmm? Do you know who are you addressing, fool? Feralda lashed out in a cold tone. Fufu? Teacher Feralda, as cool as ever, even when you lash at someone. I said with a smile. Feralda, this is just a brat? Don't lose your anger here, let me handle him. Lanath said as she was ready to kick some ass. Wait. Nurana spoke. Archwizard he is just a kid, let me handle him. Lanath said. Yes, big sister, don't worry about such scum. Feralda got heated up too. You guys can beat him well alright but if he decided to escape, you won't even catch his shadow. Nurana said. He he, damn it. She approached me and held the nape of my shirt. Why did you get that tall? She asked in a bone shivering tone. It seems that it has to do with the blood lineage. Nurana looked at me with complete disdain. Lanath is fairly tall for a Dunmer. Lanath shivered. That little girl Feralda is idiotically tall too. Feralda's face got pale. And now, you. Crap, I think you should take a look at Znavl.Ciomicron M. Nurana is sensitive about height. She is not short but everyone she knows is taller than her. She pulled me down and removed my hood. Eh, John. Lanath and Feralda exclaimed. Hey, teacher Lanath, teacher Feralda. Though we're still in a daze from my change in appearance. Nurana took a deep breath and looked at me coldly. Other than your head, the rest of your body is not my son anymore. Lanath, the knife. Alina's POV. Scary? I couldn't sleep at night at all. Last night I came to Master's chambers and requested to see her. Once I was led inside, I saw a golden-skinned woman sleeping in the bed of Master Nurana. That was Teacher Feralda. I knew the rumors about their relationship but it seems that Master is not even shy about it at all. What's with it, girl? It is late. Oh, Master? I am very sorry for disturbing your sleep. I wasn't sleeping. Something happened. Ahem. Reporting to Master, this disciple has met with Senior John this day. Stop talking like that, damn it. Hmm? Did he treat you well? Yes, Master. He was a very interesting person and I learned so much from being around him. Fufu, just don't catch the bad habits. By your wish, Master. Sai, what are you here for? Master, since the day I started following you, I know how caring and low. Cut the crap, Alina, you want something. Master said it straightforward. Let me hide in your room, Master. I beg you. Huh? Did something happen? Yes, Master. My clan wants to wed me in another clan that has strong ties with us. One of that clan's figures just appeared in town. I am already known in town and I will be found sooner or later. Please, Master. Master looked at me and started thinking then she nodded. You are right, without your consent, I should protect you from a forced marriage. Thank you very much, Master. You can sleep on that sofa. And that's how my Master agreed to help me. The next day came and Master got summoned by her cousin, Archmage Savos Aaron. She went in a heavy mood. After an hour, she returned back with Teacher Lanath and Teacher Feralda. They were laughing for some reason. This rascal, to think he would escape from me. I was surprised to my wit's end when he used that spell. Congratulations big sister. Congratulations, archwizard. Thank you guys, we need to celebrate even though it is still early morning. Oh, Alina, come, master is inviting you to a breakfast and an early drink. Eh, thank you, master. Lanath, I am sorry but go look for him, I think he returned back to town by now, and Feralda, order a servant to bring us a breakfast. Right away, archwizard. Okay, big sis. They both went away. What is the happy occasion, master? I asked. Oh. Fufu, I caught John a minute ago and he managed to use a very advanced spell to escape from me, I can't tell you the spell as I heard that you two will any having a duel. Well, congratulations, master, I should congratulate senior too for his achievement. After a few seconds, teacher Feralda came and said that she ordered a lavish breakfast, then sat on the bed and held a book. Knock knock knock. Who is it? Lady Nurina? A person came from outside the college with your seal, she said she is, ahem, a drinking buddy of yours. Drinking buddy? To master? I can imagine it and can't imagine it in the same time. Oh, finally, bring her? She must have brought a ton of drink this time. Oh, Master Ran? Wow, didn't see that side of her before. She is mostly dignified and cold. You must be wondering, what's going on? Teacher Feralda spoke as if she read my mind. To Nurana, very few people in the world deserve her attention. Lanath, me, you and John are one of those ones. There are few other people like her master and that drinking buddy. They share a strong bond. Oh, I know that Master accepted me after she assessed my talent. Even though we both were forced on each other, she could have just sent me away anytime she wants. But I am still curious who can be a drinking buddy to master. It must be at least another archwizard or summit. You old crone, look at you, still short as ever. Shut up. Everyone in this world is so damn tall. Just leave me alone, I am a normal person. Bet you are. Haha, <laughs> where is the boy? I sent Lanath to find him, he must be finishing business in town. Fine, let's wait. I could see the silhouettes of master and another woman coming through the chamber's door. Come, Feralda is here. I also want you to meet my new disciple, this is. The two came across the doorway and everyone could see the other clearly. Impossible? Oh my. Oh no. My cutest Alina. Auntie Hilda. 112 Alina and Hilda. 
as we commend their souls to Etherius, blessings of the eight divines upon them, for they are the salt and earth of Nirn, our beloved children, and beloved of Arche. May you find peace in their afterlife, and may your body find rest while it remains in Tamriel. Let no profane desecration fall upon thy remains, and may Arche protect your body and welcome your soul in his halls until Tamriel is no more. The town of Winterhold stood tall overcoming the danger of the blood horkers, the pirates that plagued the Sea of Ghosts for many years. And now it is burying the thirteen brave men that fought and died in yesterday's battle. The one who did the last rites was Njil the Lioness, she seems to have received training in priesthood before. She was injured by a crossbow bolt at the beginning of the battle yesterday, that's why I couldn't see her. Her healing process was done by Alina who was very talented in the restoration school. Up until now, the town had no official cemetery until I went personally to talk to the Jarl about a certain plot of land that the people used as a graveyard. After taking Korur's consent, the cemetery was officially made. Thank you for coming everyone. I said as a sign to make the crowd disperse. This place should be quiet as the families of the deceased must get some time to say their goodbyes. People here don't have the custom of dressing in black for the funerals but I was dressed in a black robe and a hood like the ones from the game. I don't like funerals but at least I have to show the proper behavior. I also was a bit heartbroken when I saw a grave with no one around it. It made me think about many depressing things. I had to say the goodbyes to the grave myself. Sigh, let's leave this place. I walked out of the cemetery and found a lot of people waiting. Once they saw me they all looked at my direction. I looked around and saw Jill among them. What is going on? The people, boss, they want to ask about the town's future. I looked at the people in front of me and saw some faces I saw before and some new ones. They all looked at me. Sigh, time to be a polit icon. I understand. Ahem, everyone, thank you for your contribution at the battle of yesterday and its aftermath. I know that before, we used to say that we will rebuild this town no matter what and whoever tries to stop us will be the enemy that we crush and repel. I say we all delivered the promise yesterday, and you should feel proud instead of being afraid. From this day onward, we will fight the good fight as we learned from yesterday. We gained a lot of experience and developed better ways to deal with the enemy, yesterday's terror won't happen ever again. If the enemy comes from the sea, they will never set foot on land. If the enemy comes from the land, we will bury them under it. Even if the enemy comes from the sky, we will be ready for that too. Yesterday after the end of the battle, I, John Dare, Thane of Winterhold, held a meeting with the head figures in town to create an end to this mess. We reached a lot solutions and decisions about what to do and right now we are putting an organized plan to deal with the current situation. We reached out some allies and I am glad to tell you that our situation is more organized and much better than yesterday. An official announcement will be published under the name of the Dare Dragon Group. Thank you for listening. The people were still worried but they nodded and everyone went to their business. John, I came. Human, carry me out. John and Nefertiti who came together started running towards me. Joel was smiling. You have finished. Yes, here. Joel handed me a high quality piece of paper, I instantly opened and start reading it. Fu fu fu, success. With this paper, I am the ruler in the shadows, I guess Delvin called it the Shadow Jarl once. Does this mean that you get to do anything in Winterhold as long as it is a public property? Yes, we will have to pay rent to the Jarl but I will find a way to scam him legally. I said with a smile. If it is about law then I am the daddy around here. Jolinar came and clung to my arm, he he he, you can turn from the saint to the devil in a second. Please don't misunderstand me, I treat people according to their worth. A dog like Koror is only meant to be used, he chose to join hands with the pirates and enslave the people before. The people, on the other hand, are the ones that require my full care. They are the real force and have the power to turn the weakest town into Skyrim to one of the towns that could withstand an attack from a hidden clan. The people want you here, the thing they are afraid of the most is you disappearing once again. Zvul.Ciomicron M. Then I will have to disappoint them, I am but one man. They should rely on themselves for the fights yet to come. Next time, I will set back and watch them do the work. They don't need a hero to save them every day, if they don't get to learn how to do it themselves then there is no point. All I need to do is to teach them and lord over them. Plus, that is not the role I was meant to play. You are talking about the dragon slaying business. Exactly, dragons are the game I should focus on, the whole of Skyrim will need me by that time. So, what is the next step we are going to take? First, the temple we are planning to build will give us a good amount of popularity for now, and the defense walls and towers will also be something easy to deal with. I gave some money to Wulfur so he can expand the workshop, Anjium will be responsible for the new ships, Trudvar and Jol will both work on training the men. After all, we only need to go official after a few days, I said and waved the paper to Jol. We were walking in the street until we reached the house. In front of it, someone seemed to be waiting for me, Teacher Lanath. I jumped from my place. John, don't escape again, I came in peace. Peace? You guys wanted to cut my head this morning. Well, no one told you to get ridiculously tall to the point that we don't recognize you then come hit on us. Oh, I shouldn't have done that? Anyway, I was so scared that I ran away for my life. How heartless can you be on your juniors? Beat it, John. Archwizard Nurina wants to see you. It seems that she has a visitor you should meet. Oh, she's here. I'll go change and come right away. Alina's POV. I tried to run. I tried. And I failed. Auntie caught me and made me sit on her lap. Why? 
Fate, you are so cruel. I can't take this anymore. No way in oblivion I can take it. So embarrassing. Teacher Feral. Master, please stop smiling. Help me. To think those two monsters are drinking buddies? Truly, birds of a feather. I think you should take a look at Snovel.Ciomicron M. I didn't know that you two know each other. Master was smiling while talking to Auntie Hilda. Fufu, we go way back since little Alina was five years old. Auntie was amused for some reason. Ho ho, since that time, huh? So Alina was that child you talked about. Yes, Alina is the one who opened my heart once again. Look how cute and small she is. Auntie Hilda started poking me cheeks. Damn it, so embarrassing. I am not cute or small. Auntie, stop bullying me. Fufu, she is always like that. Fufu, they are laughing like the pair of foxes they are. How drunk were the gods to let Auntie and Master meet each other? I asked as I completely gave up. I can't simply escape from the hands of Auntie now. Well, it was fate. You will get to know the details later. But now, it has been a year since Auntie saw you. Look how much have you grown. Auntie was still not letting me go. I am sure a fire main won't notice how much other people grow anyway. Master said. Come on. Alina is the one I raised up. How can I not notice her growth? Still, what is that thing about forcing her to marry into your clan? Master asked. Oh, that is a very old tradition between our clans. We must be always tied by blood as the Moonblade clan is the only reason our Firemane clan survived the Great Collapse. My mother is from the Moonblade clan, and George's wife and Scatty's husband are also from the Moonblade clan. There are other marriages as well. As for Alina, she gets to choose her husband from the clan if only she wished for it. Whoa, so that's the reason. Fine Alina, looks like you don't have to choose after all. Master said overlooking the real problem. Master, if I refused, my clan will look at me as a person who betrayed the traditions and everyone will hate me. They don't even dare to do so. Whatever you want, Auntie will support you, but you will have to come to our clan for this month. You know that you must take your coming of age ceremony with us. No, I am staying with Master. Actually, I am going as well. Master said, Wah, Master is going, you traitor. Damn it, I, I still have a duel with a senior. Huh, who dares to duel my cutie Alina? Tell me and Auntie will hunt them down for you. No, Auntie, I am the challenger. Eh, you are challenging someone. Well, I didn't want to do it at first but the steward of our clan came and declared the challenge without my consent. Hmm, Auntie doesn't see you losing to anyone. She is fighting against John. Master said. Suddenly, Auntie Hilda stiffened, and the atmosphere changed greatly. WH, WH, why, did something happen between them? E, Auntie Hilda is. She is about to cry. No, they seem to have a good impression of each other. Master said. Phew, that was close. It should be a small friendly fight then. Let them use wooden swords, Niruna. Eh? Auntie is saying very strange words. It's a duel over my legacy disciple title. What does that mage nonsense mean? They will use the best magic they have, Hilda. This is an all-out fight. Verwa why one Niruna? Stop it. Don't make it happen. Please. Eh? Auntie is freaking out. Just leave it to them. They will solve it on their own. Niruna eh? How can you be so heartless? Auntie said and started hugging me tightly. My bones? Don't worry. They won't harm each other. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, just let the girl go, she is dying. Oh sorry. Phew, huff, huff, knock na knock knock knock. Who is it? The door knocked and Master replied. The most handsome young man on Tamriel. The one behind the door seemed to be John. Master looked at Auntie. Auntie who was keeping me on her lap the whole time let go of me. She just let me go. Like that? Come in. Master said. 113 John and Hilda. Alina's POV. I don't remember Auntie looking like this. He face was stiff and her expressions were shaken. What in the world? I never have seen this strong woman like that. She was either furious like an angry beast or silly like doting parent. I saw all her expressions, all her emotions, all her rage, and all her happiness. But she was never shaken. She was the most amazing person I ever knew when I was a child. Time stopped in my head and I remembered old memories. Some of the best memories and the saddest memories I ever had. My mother died when I was young. I was so young that I can't even remember her face anymore. They said she was so beautiful and everyone loved her. But since the time I was born, she became sick and weak. When she died I became the young mistress of the house. I don't remember much since then but I was never liked by the clan that much. Something about my eyes made them wary. The eyes of Masser, different from the eyes of Secunda that all my clan has. When I reached the age of five, the Firemane clan sent people to request the aid of our clan for apprehending a member of theirs that went rogue. My father refused to send the men yet he carried his swords alone and went down the mountain. He said he alone was enough. After a week, he returned with a strange woman that was covered in blood. He told the Firemane steward to return as the woman would stay with us until her matter is over. Since that day, I've got to know that woman as Hilda. She was a large woman taller than any man in our clan. She lived in the castle with us and never appeared too much. One thing we had in common, everyone was afraid of us. She never talked and glared at people all the time, but she didn't glare at me. Since that time, we started to get to know each other. I brought my dolls and started playing in her room, in time she started to get close to me too. Months passed and I was always with her, I slept in her room and ate with her. During that time I got learn her story. 
She had a child, a son she named Joan Hilt, a son that everyone in the world wanted to see him dead. In order for him to live, she had to give him to someone else in a faraway place so he can grow up in peace. Her father, the one I knew later as Grandpa Terman Firemane, forbade her from going to see him. He also didn't want anyone to find him. Auntie Hilda always cried when she was alone so I stayed with her most of the time. I didn't want to see her crying anymore. By the time I became seven, my father started teaching me the sword art of our clan, I was praised in every swing I made. Auntie Hilda also trained me many times. When I became ten years old, Auntie said that her son has also become ten. She cried bitterly that I couldn't stop her anymore. All I could do is help her escape from our clan to go see her son. The clan caught me as I really didn't put up much resistance. They tried to ask me about her whereabouts many times but I never said anything. They gave up as they seemed to have understood what was going on. A month passed and Auntie came back once again. She has changed a lot. She was smiling all the time since then. She said that she could see her son. He was very smart and had a very unique personality. She said many things that time but everything about Auntie changed. She became a very happy person. Grandpa decided that it is of no use to keep her anymore. She won't go on a revenge spree once again judging by how she changed. Auntie started doting me mercilessly ever since and sometimes it turned scary. She also took me outside the clan many times and showed me the glade where here clan lives, the sea in the north, her ship, the animals she raises, the hot springs in East Marsh. She showed me the world I never knew. I got to have many friends since then and the world became so much easier to live in, I even started to get along with even my stupid clan. All these memories went through my head in a few seconds. During these few seconds, Auntie was beside me no more. She was there, hugging that young man who just came. Just like her, he was tall and strong. Just like her, he had that red fiery hair and gleaming blue eyes. I heard her crying something just a second ago. She was saying, Joan Hilt. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. John's POV. Almost six years have passed and that woman never changed. She has no control over her strength. She cried my name and hugged me so fast that I couldn't even have the time to dodge. Well, I wouldn't have dodged her anyway. She was, she was crying. I missed you, Joan Hilt. Mother missed you so much. Yeah, I missed you too. I didn't say that but I hugged her back. By the time she let go, I could see no one in the room. They all must have left. You have grown a lot, Joan Hilt. She said. Well, thanks to a certain annoying bloodline, I had to give all of my clothes away. Pft ha ha ha. Well, we all did that at some point. Ah ha ha. You haven't changed at all. I said as I looked at her. She was the same as I remembered her. He he. The perks of being fire main. We grow up as slow as elves. Seriously. Yeah. Damn. I should prepare for a slow life from now on. Hilda and I started laughing mindlessly. Come, let's sit. She pulled me over and sat on the sofa. She was smiling brightly and warmly. My heart was being healed from seeing her smile. Rays of sunlight came from the window behind the sofa and added more warmth on this cold day. Hilda was a beauty. I could only be thankful to her for giving me the genes to be this devilishly handsome. Her red curly hair and shining blue eyes were just the starts of our similarities. My hair was one degree darker and straight but it was nothing to consider different when we compare the rest of the features. Even our height was almost similar. How long has it been? She wondered. Five years, eight months, and fourteen days. I said. Whoa. Someone was counting the days. She said with a smile. Well, can't blame me for being awesome. Hee <laughs> hee. Still the arrogant brat. I kept looking at her bright smile until she spoke again. I think you should take a look at snovel.comicron m. Now tell me, during those five years, eight months, and fourteen days, how was your life? Hmm? Let's start from the day you left. Time passed. And more time passed. It was already sunset. Oh boy, that was the longest catching up I ever had. Hilda said as she stretched her arms left and right. We still haven't heard your turn. I said. Come on. There is plenty of time, and I am hungry. Yep. I am hungry too. Where have they gone? No idea. Nurina took the wine barrel with her. You brought Nurina a wine barrel. I said as I felt a sudden headache in my head. Sorry about that. She seemed to know what she has done. Good grief. Let's go look for them. Hilda and I went out of Nurina's room and I locked it. We took the stairs to Feralda's room but no one was there, Lonith didn't know where they are either. That only left one place possible. Let's go to my house. I said. Fufu, my son has his own house now. Well, if Nurina has a barrel of wine and took it to my house, well, at least the basement may survive. We headed out of the college and reached the town. On the stone bridge of the college, I saw the fire main ship in the sea. That's one huge ship. Hee <laughs> hee, that's my ship, the Guilty Crown. It used to be the flagship of the Blood Fleet. The Blood Fleet? The fleet of the Bloodsail clan. Hee <laughs> hee. Ten years ago, I infiltrated their clan, freed a lot of prisoners and workers from enslavement, beheaded their patriarch, and stole the ship. The Blood Sails never dared to sail far away from their port ever since that day. All they could do is to use other names like the Blood Horkers or whatever to avoid me now. Dayom? Well, I guess that was one angry Hilda back then. You are not causing a ruckus anymore, right? Nah, I was stopped by a childhood friend of mine. It was not my finest moment but it was the time when friends act to save each other's hide. We kept talking until we reached the town. There were a lot of people gathered around some place. What is going on there? Hilda asked. Oh, 
That's the notice board. It must be the announcement. Announcement. Come, you will like that one. I walked to the crowd which moved to the left and right once they saw me. Hmm. Hilda hummed as she started reading the announcement. Underscore 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 on. Announcement. It is with a great pleasure that we announce, to the good people of Winterhold, the establishment of the Dare Dragon Company under the management of Thane John Dare, Thane of Winterhold. The company has taken the permission to invest in all the public resources around the hold. The company opens the door for a lot of major departments that will work day and night for the prosperity and the protection of Winterhold and all its people. The major department are, construction, real estate, security, exploring, industry, trading, transportation, investment, insurance, and entertainment departments alongside other minor service departments. Another series of recruitment announcements and requests will be announced on a later date. John Dare, Chief Executive Officer. Wolfer, Industrial Department. Angium, Transportation Department. Ilishka, Financial Department. Trudvar, Security Department. Njol, Exploration Department. Underscore 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 on. Hilda was speechless. Do you like what you see? I asked. To tell the truth, I was showing off what I have done. There are a lot of complicated words but it is no wonder that the blood sales were afraid of you. She said. He he, you liked my gift last night. Fufu, you rascal, you really made a score on them. They won't forgive you even though you managed to pin the death of their son on us. Well, from this day onward, I would love to see them doing something about it. Are you prepared for them? Haha, <laughs> I have a plan in motion, it would take time but they also need a lot of time to recover. The hold is now completely mine. Winterhold is mostly a wasteland, you know, you sure you can find anything useful. Fufu, you have no idea, Hilda, you have no idea. 114 John and Alina, Hilda and Urina, hey, stop acting all mysterious on me, kid. What's in Winterhold? Hmm, not gonna tell? Ouch. I teased Hilda but got my back slapped. Going to talk or you'll make your old mother force it out of you. Hilda was smiling and I felt she was enjoying the situation. Sigh, why ruin the surprise for you? You saw my company just now has an exploration group for digging out resources and all that. One day, I will make a grand expedition and you, my old mother, will be the first name on the list. Ouch. My back got slapped again. Who are you calling old? She said while grinning. Sigh. I now know where my unreasonableness came from. Anyway, the town looks lovely. Can't compare it to last year. Last year? You came here. Ah. I visited Nurina with a big keg of mead. Feral da kept whining from how much we drank that day. Ouch. Why are you slapping my back? I led Nurina to the Sea Mist Manor. Once we arrived, someone was waiting for me. Boss, I am from the workshop. The chief told me to tell you that he is done with the armor and wants to discuss some other things. I forgot what it was called. Oh, tell the chief that the boss will be busy. He can join me here if he is done. Yes, boss. The young man said and left. Boss, chief. The boss is me, the chief is Wolfer. I said. Aha, uh -huh, heard about him, your sworn brother. More like my actual brother, I know the guy since we were four. Yeah, I heard. He is the one who has a thing with Porna. Sigh, poor kid. Eh, what happened to Porna? Hilda looked at me and let out a long sigh. She is a fire main, you know. She said then made a gesture with her hand. She was referring to the height. Whoops, I completely forgot. She is around my age? Hilda, don't tell me she is. Yes, she is this tall now. Poor wolf. He used to be the largest boy in the orphanage. Now, pfft. I started laughing uncontrollably. Good grief, you are horrible. Hilda looked tired. The loss has tried to look smaller many times but all of no use. Well, they will be about the same size. No problem there in my opinion. I hope so. Anyway, let's go inside before things get out of hand. I said while pushing the front gate. After we went into the house. Let's just say it can get worse. Nurina and Feralda were arguing and drinking, Nefertiti and Joel were fighting over food, and Alina, who appeared to have followed Nurina here, was going through my books. Once they saw us coming in, everyone froze and looked at us. Zvul.c Omicron M. Is it awkward here or is it just me? Hilda asked. They were expecting some family drama to happen? Look how disappointed they are. The frozen atmosphere eased up a bit as everyone stopped the mess they were causing. Anyway, this was the first time Sea Mist Manor gets this lively. Auntie, I demand an explanation. Hmm, this is interesting. The relationship between the Fire Manies and the Moonblade seems to be very deep. I was listening to a long explanation about my identity from Hilda to Alina. According to Alina, the Fire Manies should have kept me hidden until the age of 16 then after that I would wait to fulfill some destiny. To her, me being in the outside world is something unthinkable. Blah 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 blah. Can you even shut up for a second? No one can keep me anywhere I don't want to stay at. And that destiny nonsense is already something I can't escape from, I checked that out myself. You, you, do you even realize the danger you are in? 
If anyone from the enemy clan saw you they will definitely find out that you are a fire main. I guess fire mainies can go anywhere in Skyrim, right Hilda? Hilda looked at me as if she was saying leave me out of this. Seems like she likes Alina a lot. But you can't just expose yourself to danger like that? Do you even realize how many people died in the fights between the clans 15 years ago? Do you know that the most sacred place in Skyrim, High Hrothgar, interfered to put an end to that fight? High Hrothgar did? Hmm? I admit that I have too little knowledge about such things compared to you hidden clans kids, but don't you dare think of my own business as something a clan can decide. They didn't keep me in their watch or even did they come into contact with me for so many years. If my guess is correct, the day I should know the truth about myself should have been this day. But they knew too damn well that I shouldn't be stopped or be put under their control. As far as I know, this was the decision the fire main patriarch took and it was the wisest decision to take. What? How is that even possible? For two reasons? My fate and the fate of those who are around me. You are a mystic like myself and we don't need to argue about how fate works but the fire main patriarch realized that if I got associated with the clan, my fate will get hindered and I may put the clan in a grave danger. My fate is too troublesome to be associated with. Alina looked at me and kept glaring but she had no more words to argue back. Auntie, say something. Hilda who was resting her arms on the table and holding her head side and looked at us. What Joan Hilt said is true. Father's reason was to keep him from worrying too much about his fate or causing the clan any harm. He said this will do until Joan Hilt figures out his own fate, dot. Already figured it out though. I said while playing with Nefertiti. Kind help me, do you think it is easy to figure out fate? Alina rolled her eyes and spoke coldly to me. Ask Joel? Hey Joel, yesterday before dawn. I can confirm that John is already very aware of his fate. Joel said in a calm tone. Nefertiti was there too. Human knows a big dragon. Nefertiti said, only I heard that of course. I, myself, wouldn't doubt the credibility of a cat and a troubled child at all. Feral da who was having a drink with Nuruna on the other side of the room started mocking that I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. Said the only non-stingy Altmer I know of. Nuruna fired back. Alina put her hands under her veil and massaged her stiffened face. She finally got tired. Damn, it is midnight already. Well, at least I learned a lot about the fire manies and the moonblades from this conversation. I am not really in bad terms with Alina, our lives are leagues apart. She was raised as the princess of one of the most prestigious clans in Skyrim and was even considered a member of another prestigious clan. I, however, was raised as an orphan and lived in a city of criminals. The way we see the world is just different. Where she sees responsibility, I see freedom. I don't think we may agree on many things but I think the way she does things is far better than me. If I see a bandit or a pirate, I wouldn't acknowledge their humanity and put them down on the spot. But she will look for the remaining human within them and try to pull it back up. Not because she is an idiot or a naive person, it is only because she is strong that she can have the luxury to do so. Make no mistake, the girl in front of me is a monster from the same level as me. I defeated her once before on Mount Anther, but she became much stronger since then. Let's talk about something fun, shall we? I spoke directly to her. Hmm, what is it? I put on a devilish smile. My blood starts to boil when I think about this. I heard someone arranged a duel between us. I said. The atmosphere in the room froze. Even Nefertiti could read the mood and stopped acting silly. The air around Alina changed and I could feel a smile behind her face veil. I was going to let this go, you know. She said in a playful tone. He he he, come on. You and I both know that we are going to fight no matter what. There is no way out of this. Tai he, I knew you would think so too. Say, when and where. Tomorrow, Hall of the Elements. Stoop. Hilda stood up and slammed the table. The table, phew. Thank heavens it was enchanted. You two are not fighting? I don't care what you are fighting over. This fight is not happening. Calm down, Hilda. Nurina stood up and came. These are my disciples and I am the one to decide. These are children, Nurina. They might get carried away. I can't afford to see any of them hurt. The two of them were lightly drunk and they were exchanging a small bit of their auras. Enough. I stood up and used my aura to suppress theirs. It was a pitiful try but they complied. We youngsters want to fight. Hilda, if you are worried, you can be the judge of the duel. You can stop it anytime if you feel it became dangerous. Do you agree, Hilda? I said. Gah, fine, but don't you two dare to put a single scratch on each other. Hilda said. Okay, fine. And Nurina? We have to solve this, the two of us. Hilda said. Eh, solve what? Fu fu fu. What was the score last time? If I remember correctly, I. Nurina was amused. It was a draw. Hilda cut her words. Last time? Draw? What is going on here? Guys, you are drunk? Don't say scary stuff. I tried to pacify the mood. Mind your business, brat. This giant woman will get to see the new stuff I developed this time. Huh? New stuff? Show me what you got. Hilda got excited. Oh boy, this is not good. John Dare? No, Joan Hilt? These two drunkards have their own fight, we have ours. Alina stood up too. I looked at her in the eye and saw how much she was itching for this. Honestly, I can't ignore her crimson eyes anymore. The fight will be at the afternoon tomorrow in the Hall of Elements. I will make the arrangements she said. Agreed? If I lose, you will be Nurina's legacy disciple, but that's not fair in my opinion. 
If I lose, I am losing something I value but if you lose you are just losing a duel. Offer something of the same value, I said. Everyone looked at me then looked at her. If I lose to you Joan Hilt Fire Main, I, Alina Moonblade, will be your wife. Pft, me, huh, Nurina, Hilda, Nords, Feralda, wait, what, Jol, you cat to be kidding me, Nefertiti, bonus, black small square I quit, I quit, I am leaving this novel, I am leaving that damn author, I am leaving this place, find someone else, John, wait, John, there got to be a solution, Nurina, solution, to what, the damn author wants it, the damn author gets it, I was told this novel is a novel where I can get lazy, have women around me, work only once a day. It was the best place to work. All the MCS out there were envious, even that virgin Leon Tark. But I never ever signed up for a marriage. No ho 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 sir. I, quit. You hear me, author. I, quit. John. John, I will go talk to him. Just calm down. Nurina. No no no, Nurina, you don't understand. He was preparing for this from the very beginning. He was planning to make hashtag team underscore Jal and hashtag team underscore Alina from the start. I think he already made some merchandise to make money from, John, but, Nurina, ha 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 ha, Don, here, he is laughing, he knows what he has done, I kee a it, John, 115 John vs Alina, this is John Dare, why is this happening to me, I am standing there in front of that annoying girl and everyone in the college is watching, was this duel so anticipated, damn it, why I have to accept such an unreasonable condition, I need to do this fast, if I can't do this fast then I can say goodbye to my happy and quiet life, marriage, more like the worst case scenario for life. No wandering around, no going outs, no sleeping outside, and most importantly, no lollygagging? Fine. Moonblade girl, I won't be going easy on you. I never asked for you to do so. TCH? Are we fighting already, judge? Damn it. You two, I forbid you from harming each other. Ready? Fight. This has already reached this far, better finish it quickly. After all, this is the only way to survive the marriage trap they set me up in last night. Remembering last night gives me a headache. Last night. If I lose to you Joan Hilt Fire Main, I, Alina Moonblade, will be your wife. Pft, me, huh, Nurina, Hilda, wait 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 wait, what, Jol, you cat to be kidding me, Nefertiti, that girl said some crazy weird shit, day fuck a fucking fuck is that, you, 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 you think you can get away with such a prank, I completely lost my cool, prank, I made that condition a long time ago to avoid getting married without my consent, auntie knows about it too, I will get married to a person with a good background and can surpass me in talent. She casually said. Everyone looked at Hilda. I, I knew, but I didn't think she was that serious. Hilda's face turned pale she then looked at Alina. Are you serious? Dead serious. Alina said as it was natural. Originally, when I came to Winterhold to look for someone that goes by the name Darth Vader. He managed to defeat me at Mount Anther so I thought I could find anything about him in Winterhold but no one knew anything at all. I slapped my forehead and covered my eyes. This is not happening. This girl is nuts after all. Why do I always have to deal with girls that have mental problems? Hmm. Nurina was thinking about something. If we compare John's and Alina's talents, they will come very close to each other. It is hard to tell who is more talented but John has the lead in creativity. Hmm? What are you talking about? Is this the time to compare our talents now? Maybe you are right. But Alina's speed of improvement is astonishing. Hilda said. She may get lazy sometimes but give her the right motivation and she will create wonders. Okay, what's going on here? I was a bit confused. I think Master and Auntie are right. Even without comparing talents, the identity of Joan Hilt Firemane is already high enough to outshine mine. Even without revealing his real identity, John Dare is the disciple of an archwizard and a new powerhouse in Skyrim, that of course, if he managed to defeat me, Zvul.Ciomicron M. You are annoying. I don't agree. I am not accepting that whatever become your wife thingy. Offer something else and go look for that Darth Vader away. I said. Huh? Why? Because you are winning either way like that. You will either become the legacy disciple of an archwizard or get to marry the most handsome young man in Tamriel. Huh? Why are you talking like you are not going to get any benefits here? You will get to marry the daughter of a very influential family and also the most beautiful young lady in Tamriel. Ain't you a little bit too arrogant? Calling yourself the most beautiful young lady in Tamriel. Right back to you. GRRRRR. We were growling and staring daggers at each other. I think I have a solution. The one who was silent all the time finally has spoken. Jol. Jol came and stood beside me at the table. Excuse my rudeness, Lady Nurina and Lady Hilda. I want to say that I have seen Alina's magic and I must say it is very hard to deal with, but I am more familiar than anyone else with John's current strength. My suggestion is, if Alina can withstand John for 5 minutes, then she can get to apply her condition. Other than that, her loss. Genius? Agreed. I instantly agreed with Jol. 5 minutes are more than enough. Agar. Alina was about to agree but, disagreed. That was Nurina. Eh? Why? Jolinar? Oh, little naive Jolinar? Don't even think I don't know what you are planning. Nurina said with a grin. Everyone looked at Nurina questioning what she has realized. In a prolonged fight against John, 
Very few people will be able to take advantage against him. Even some masters don't have a chance against him that way. Alina will run out of Magicka midway. Everyone in the college is well aware of John's ridiculous amount of Magicka. Hmm, she is right. So what do you suggest? I asked. We will go with Jolinar's suggestion, with a small tweak. Okay, I think you should take a look at Snovel.Ciomicron M. Let's make it one minute. E, come on. My crisis sensor reacted immediately. But, Nirana continued. It will be an all-out fight. You two can use anything from weapons to even the magical methods other than casting. Everyone went silent for a second. But, but that won't be a suitable fight for being your legacy disciple at all. I said. Well, it is my legacy and I am the one to decide. Good grief. Present time. And that's how we reached this moment? In order to avoid some weird marriage arrangement and keep my position as Nirana's legacy disciple, I have to defeat Alina in a minute or less. We were standing in the northern side of the Hall of the Elements. This place was the usual place for duels as it is wide enough to hold a basketball match in. Between me and Alina, Hilda was standing. She wasn't in her usual armor but in a dark fur clothing. She was saying a lot of match instructions mixed with some motherly ones. I and Alina kept nodding every time she speaks. Honestly, I felt happy to see Hilda acting like that. Nirina, on the other hand, was making a fox smile for some reason. I don't know what is she planning but it doesn't feel good about it. Other than Nirina, most of the people I know and a lot of other students were here. I could see that shinobi-like guy, the one who acts as Alina's attendant, Skywalker. There were the guys from the Creation Club as well as Rusning and his group of Feral Da's disciples. The heads of the departments were all here except for that grumpy librarian. The most surprising enough was Savo's Aaron, the see no evil archmage, he was sitting there and beside him was a strange looking man dressed in a white robe and funny looking hat as was acting so high and mighty. Not that any of it matters anyway. I was facing Alina who was in her red dress and face veil. She also was holding a black staff that can use wind magic. I myself was wearing the savior's hide that got some new extra modification by Wolfer such as a fur hood and extra pieces of chain mail. My Skyforge saber was on my side, and fire magic and conjuration staves were on my back. This duel is between John Dare and Alina Moonblade for the title of the legacy disciple of Archwizard Nurana Aaron. In the case of Alina's victory, she will take the title. In the case of John's victory, he gets to keep the title and gains the benefits of a commitment Alina swore on herself. In case of John's victory under the time limit of one minute, he gets to keep the title and can free Alina from her commitment if he wishes. The rules are clear, no lethal magic to be used, no harming one another. I swear on the bone of shore, if one of you brats, cough. Nirina made a fake cough. Oh, I got carried away. Anyway, you know what I want to say. Now, I don't know how things get done here but by traditions, the challenger presents themselves first. Alina. Alina nodded and was about to speak but. May I present the young lady of our house. The man who was sitting beside Archmage Savo's Aaron stood up from his place and walked beside Alina. Steward or Nolf? I don't really think this matter needs. Ahaha, the young caddy is right. This small fight is nothing to you anyway. But the formalities must be kept, so please allow me. The man turned around faced me with a smug grin then turned to the crowd. Venerable mages and students of the college, I present to you challenger for the title. She is Alina Crimson Moon of Clan Moonblade, favored child of Kine, seer of fates, breaker of lies, lady of the storms, and the undisputed victor of this duel. He then paused and looked at me. The young lady kindly accepts your surrender. Everyone was speechless. This man, he is so thick-skinned. Despite the impressive long introduction of Alina, I don't understand why he had to ruin it like that. I was provoked to the limit? The crowd was also provoked but no one dared to utter a word against the man who was just sitting beside the archmage. The people who were irradiated the most were Nurina and Hilda. The man took a deep breath and spoke once again. To tell the truth, I wasn't really thinking it would be such big deal when I took the liberty to arrange this duel between the young lady and a nobody, but to see that even the archmage is attending the duel made me feel guilty for wasting his precious time. Everyone here knows the result of the match already, so please, don't waste our time, young man. Oh boy, this man's provocation skill is godly. I can remember the last time I was provoked like that was when Wolfer and John Battleborn got arrested for a day during the tournament. I can see that Nirina and Hilda are about to jump and beat this guy up, Savo's Aaron was covering his face with his palm and sighing while Alina was holding her head. This guy was surely living under a rock the past couple of days. Well, I'll just ignore him. I'll ignore him and just don't think about it. I am not angry at all. Anger is a sin? Fu fu fu. A laugh leaked out and I was about to speak but. John, I'll introduce you. A voice came from behind me. I turned around and saw Jolinar coming. She stood right in front of me facing that clown. I couldn't see her facial expressions but I am sure she was grinning. She then faced the crowd and pointed at me. A beautiful wide smile appeared on her face. Her lips parted from each other and her clear voice sounded. This is John Dare. The place became silent. Boss. Club president. John Dare. John. 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 Jolinar turned to me with a smile. Ha ha ha. How in oblivion can I be angry after seeing that smile? 116 John vs Alina, 60 seconds. A slash N, sorry for not announcing earlier. 
A special big thanks to at Anton Bigden at Deed Survivor at Tetley Desh you guys are awesome and part the reason why this thing is still going, welcome to the cult, Hilda's POV, two of my most important people in the world are standing face to face against each other, I can't stand to watch it but I have to be the person who stands between them if something dangerous happened, I looked at Nirina and she nodded, according to her, everything should go just perfect, it was her idea from the start but I would have chosen a better solution to make this happen, please, kids, don't do anything reckless. Joan Hilt stood to my left in his most impressive appearance wearing an armor that gave of a majestic air and a ferocious aura. Alina stood to my right in her most beautiful appearance wearing a crimson dress that added more to her beauty. After a few words of warning from me to make sure everything was not going to get in the wrong direction, I asked them to do the introduction. Alina's turn came first but the steward of the Moonblade, Ornolf, interpreted the introduction and made a problem. Joan Hilt is smiling but that's not a smile at all. Where did he learn it from? But to say something like that to the one you are challenging. Even if it wasn't disrespectful to John, it is like slapping Nirina on the face and telling her the disciple she raised is nothing special. She is an archwizard for kind's sake. Just as I was about to shout at him, the assassin girl that follows John around came forward. I don't like the girl but I say the way John looks at her, he completely accepted her as family. She also looks at him the same way I used to look at Joan Rid before. According to Nirina, the girl is too submissive when it comes to John. A mother wouldn't like a girl like that around her son but Nirina wouldn't be cheated in people, that's why I took her word for it and didn't bother with the girl. But when the girl stood in front of Joan Hilt and introduced him only by this is John Dare, the quiet hall applauded and no one remained his place. Joan Hilt is that popular. I think the assassin girl can be trusted for now. Steward Ornolf's face turned blue and walked away to his seat. He is an idiot through and through but he didn't know that he was talking to a fire main. I'll let Alina handle him later. The problem is, Alina's image in front of the students may get affected but that behavior. Joan Hilt and Alina were now facing each other but I didn't see them putting on a fighting air just yet. Joan Hilt smiled and spoke. That was, ahem. Steward Ornolf from my clan. Alina replied with a fresh smile. Good. John is giving her some face. Haha, <laughs> you should have told that Skywalker guy to make your introduction instead of that clown. Mara's mercy? Here he goes? Wahahaha. <laughs> a loud laugh sounded? That was Nirina. These two? They just don't have limits when it comes to bad mouthing people. I could see Steward Ornolf's face turning green this time. He would have replied at Joan Hilt, but Nirina's laugh sealed it. Archmage Savos tried to calm him down and glared at Nirina, but she ignored him and kept stroking Joan Hilt's cat. Alina, on the other hand, didn't know whether to laugh or cry so she remained silent. I held a small hourglass in my hand and declared, this one minute hourglass will decide the start of the match as well as the one minute challenge between John and Alina. You two are ready. Ready? Moonblade girl, I won't be going easy on you. I never asked for you to do so. Ready. Damn it. You two, I forbid you from harming each other. Now, fight. John's POV. Just right before Hilda turns the hourglass, I gave an order to the system. System, give me a 60 seconds countdown and keep it on screen. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. 1 o'clock. Hilda's POV. Now, fight. 0059. Joan Hilda and Alina took their staves with their right and evoked a spell on the left, not a second passed and there was a rune circle on the ground in front of each of them. 0058. Both of them stuck the end of their staves in the middle of the rune circle and took a shiny thing from their bags then threw them on the rune circles. These appeared to be soul gems. 0057. Look at that. Grand soul gems. The crowd was shocked from the appearance of the highest grade soul gems. But John and Alina were already moving. 0056. They were moving in a complete synchronization and stood in front of their staves while preparing the next move. Their staves, on the other hand, were hovering over the rune circles casting magic on their own. 0055. The synchronization continued and both kids cast a fortification magic on themselves with a hand and an attack spell on the other. 0054. The synchronization ended at this point as Joan Hilt shot lightning magic and Alina shot wind magic. Both spells made contact and cancelled one another. The one who fell short in the previous exchange was Alina. Joan Hilt's magic was just too fast. 0053. The staves behind the kids finished their first cast in unison. From Alina's staff, a cyclone of wind appeared and charged against Joan Hilt. Near Joan Hilt's staff, void distorted and being was conjured. It was a storm atronach. 0052. John faced the wind cyclone with a lighting spell but the cyclone was stronger than anything Alina cast until now. John was planning to cast the next spell at Alina but the wind cyclone withstood John's attack and kept advancing. Alina wanted to take advantage and attack John but the Atronach attacked her. John was about to fall short in this exchange. 0051, 0050, 0049. The wind cyclone took four spells from John to stop. By that time his staff conjured one more Atronach and Alina's cast more wind cyclone. 0048. John changed the spell to a stronger spell and finished the cyclone before it even moves by two attacks. Alina attacked him but he found the time to block with a ward. 0047. Alina got pressured by the second Atronach as she failed to destroy the first in time. The second Atronach and John attacked her. 0046. 0045. 
0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
Blocked? Who did that? Why? I looked to the side. Hilda shouted a bit early. Nirina was smiling. Wait, Nirina, did you just cast silence on me? 117 John vs. Alina, that was close. Weekly extra chapter 1 half. Who did that? Why? I looked to the side. Hilda shouted too early. Nirina was smiling. Wait, Nirina, did you just cast silence on me? Hilda and Nirina, both of you were trying to make me win after one minute, so that I get to marry her? I kept looking at them both. Hilda felt awkward and looked away and Nirina covered most of her face with her hands. This was, this was not cool. Not cool at all. The victory was just like this close. I could almost taste it. Damn it. Those two planned it all along. So you think I can just be forced on some marriage because some girl said so? Oh, you are mistaken. You are too mistaken. To play this cheap game with me? Did you really think it will work? I kept staring at them and everyone in the hall followed my line of sight. Nirina is normally thick-skinned so she withstood it but Hilda was already on the verge of crying. Everyone knew that something has happened by now. Even Nirina started to get frustrated. I looked around and saw Lina. Sigh, she put on such a good fight but those two just had to ruin it, didn't they? For some reason, she didn't stand up yet. I walked to her and crouched down. Ha 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 ha. I laughed. I couldn't help but laugh. This is so hilarious. Truly hilarious? Karma? When you are on my side, you are amazing. Fine. Thank you for the good fight. I stood up and spoke. When I charged at her just a while ago, we crashed a bit too hard which caused her to pass out. Alina Moonblade lost due losing consciousness before the end of the first minute. My win. Applause. Hee <laughs> hee. That sure felt good. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. The crowd cheered. Hilda closed her eyes and Nirina hanged down her head. Well, that was fun. Nirina, Hilda, Alina, Jolinar, and I were all invited by Savos Aaron the Archmage Quarters. Cousin, you really did it that time, didn't you? Savos was looking at Nirina with cold eyes. I don't think you have any rig. Nirina was lashing back. Please continue, Archmage. I interrupted. Ho ho, what a polite student. Nirina, even for a master you should stay partial in these kinds of duels between your personal disciples. I think it shouldn't be me who say that to you. Savos, this is my bizon. Nirina was lashing back again. Please continue, Archmage. I interrupted. Ho ho, what a polite student. I won't be saying much after this but Nirina, please be careful. Only a few people noticed what you have done so I can contain the rumors this time. Savos Aaron spoke in his quiet tone. I don't care who noti. Nirina was lashing. Please continue, Archmage. I interrupted. Ho ho, what a polite student. Anyway, we were lucky to avoid a problem this time. I can explain it that you noticed that student Alina passed out and prevented student John from causing harm to the defenseless student Alina. I don't care what yo. Nirina yelled. Archmage Savos is very wise. I interrupted. Ho ho, what a polite student. Anyway, that's all I HAV. Hey, brat. Are you enjoying seeing me being scolded? Nirina lashed at me this time. Ha <laughs> ha, music to ears. Please, just stop arguing already. Hilda was whining beside Nirina. Huh, you're still here, Hilda. Please, set aside and wait for your share. You two are getting a piece of my mind today. I said in a mocking tone. Hilda was pale and looked so pitiful. I could see an aura of gloom around her. Hey, John. What are you saying to Hilda? Hilda cheer up. He is just taking advantage of your feeling of guilt. Nirina kept shaking Hilda whose ghost already can be seen. I am sorry, John. Mother only tried to do what she thought was best. Hilda was completely down now. Mother, huh? This can be called your second day and you are doing a fantastic job already. The first day, you conspired against your son, and the second day, you applied the conspiracy. That was some feat you know. Oh no, Nirina, what have we done? That was your plan. And it was your idea. Just don't listen to him. He is tormenting you. John stop it or else. Sigh, I was already done anyway. Unlike Nurina, Hilda crumbles easily. Senior John, for what Auntie Hilda and Master Nurina did this day, please accept my apology on behalf of them. The one who spoke this time was Alina. She stood up and spoke in a polite tone. I also want to thank you for having such a great match with me. It is an honor and a privilege. I apologize for my arrogant attitude before the duel. I don't think I have a chance to go against the senior that was raised by Master. Please, forgive my past rudeness and accept me as a junior disciple from now on. Oh, that was something very nice to say. Ahem, it's okay. It's all in the past now. I think you should take a look at snovel.comicron m. Thank you very much. I'll be in your care, senior. Fufu, I get to be called senpai now. Excuse my rudeness but I have some questions about the duel. Can you please enlighten me, senior? For some reason, I am enjoying the senior thing. Okay, go ahead. First, when you slapped the wind blade back at me. How was that done? Everyone looked at me for an answer. That was Reflect Ward. I made it small enough to cover only my hand and used it in a stylish way. I said with a grin. Oh, stylish, huh? W, what about that thing when my swords felt so heavy? That's my sword's enchantment. It can make the objects it clashes with heavier with every clash. Aha. Senior, this is one of the most important questions. When I used four scrolls against you, how in kind's name did you come so fast behind me? Fufufa. Nurina laughed faintly. 
Back when I caught him in the lobby and saw how tall he became, I tried to make fun of him but suddenly he disappeared from my hands, he learned how to teleport. Teleport. Hilda and Alina jumped up. He he, only for a short distance. Amazing, if Senior could use the teleportation few more times, I wouldn't have any chance from the start. Oh, I wouldn't use my trump card all the time, also, it is really hard to control. I am still training on it. And speaking of trump cards, you used Whirlwind Spirit, that sure got me good. I said. To see another voice master under High Hrothgar other than Big Bad Ulfric is sure exciting. Fufu, you are praising me too much, senior. I only got to learn the first word from father. Oh, so her father is a voice master as well? If that's the case then will I find another voice masters among the hidden clans. But the amazing thing was senior, how did you perform the Thursday um like that? Oh, I just imitated you. Impossible. A single word of power needs years upon years of training. Alina said, except for those with the dragon blood. I said, senior, surely you jest. He always says that when he doesn't want to say how he did it, he probably was training on it since a long time ago and managed to get an insight from your performance. Nirana replied. Aha, Alina made a realization. I looked at Jolinar and we sighed together. Only you are there for me, girl. One last thing, senior, by any chance, are you Darth Vader? About that? We left the Archmage's quarters after we stayed there chatting for almost an hour. Savo's Aaron was just sitting there not doing anything. Hilda and Nurina went for a drink, Jolinar and Alina went together on something they kept whispering to each other about, Nefertiti was in a playful mood so she joined the girls. I was left alone so I decided to go bother Wolfer for a while. When I arrived at Wolfer's place, I found that Trudvar was there with him. What are you two up to? I asked. Trudvar told me it is about the old life and the new life festivals. Oh, so today is the day. The old life festival is the end of the year celebration when people go visit the graves of their dead loved ones, it is on the 31st of Evening Star. But tomorrow is the more important day. Tomorrow is the new life festival, the first of Morning Star and the day of free drinks for everyone. So, what is the plan? I asked. We are preparing some stalls and events. We also included the game that you told us about. Fufufu, -fu -fu, the children shooting range, the magical show, and the snowman competition. Tomorrow will be on a busy day. Trudvar gave me a note. Hmm, mead, honey treats, sweet rolls, wine, and free ale. This is like the dream of two people I know very well. Is there anything messing, boss? Did you make sure to attract the students from the college to celebrate in town? Yes, the creation club will give us a hand. Good, make sure to invite the people from the fire main ship. Them too, boss. Yes, don't they come to town? On a few occasions, but it seems the keeps to themselves and also the people are wary of them. Just make sure we make a good relationship with them, they are a potential ally. An ally with a name like the fire mainies, I'll work hard on that, boss. Trudvar said and left the place. It's only me and Wolfer now. Hey, Wolf. How is the thing? The thing? Ah. Uh, you devil, what kind of absurd thing is that? You like it. Fast as a bow and strong as a crossbow? Of course, I like it. Good. It is a crossbow in the end though. What do you call it? The lever action crossbow. Sigh, your naming sense is still terrible. You are not the one to speak. I took out a journal from my pocket and showed it to Wolfer. It is a black journal with a lion insignia on it. Those who know it will recognize it as the fire main banner? Bro, there's something I want to tell you about me. 118 carrot and cabbage. Hilda's POV. That boy, he is horrible. Carrot. Shut up, you are the one who raised him. Cabbage. If I knew this will happen to me one day. Carrot. It was our fault anyway. Let's receive the punishment silently. Cabbage. Punishment? I am an archwizard for Mara's sake. Why should I accept this treatment? Carrot. Well, you are the one who said it's okay as long as you get to play with children. Cabbage. Play with children means to sit down and gather them around me then tell them children stories. Not getting beaten up by them in this. What did he call it? Carrot. Mascots. Cabbage. Yes, mascots. Why should we wear this silly stuff in front of people? Carrot. Well, no one can recognize us at least. Cabbage. Look, children are coming, wave for them. Carrot. This, she was complaining about the things we are wearing just now, these things are some strange clothes John made us wear as a way of an apology for the scheme we made during the match. It seemed harmless at first but he got us good. If I remember correctly, he said we just have to watch for the children playing around during the New Life Festival. Nurina fell to the trap without noticing what she got us into. I also didn't realize that John would be this vengeful, he added that we will be wearing certain customs to get along with the kids. We never thought it would be that silly. I, Hilda of Clan Firemane, am a cabbage. And she, Archwizard Nurina Aaron, is a carrot. I am not sure how to play with children like this but Nurina who was complaining all the time is playing with kids just fine and they are all gathered around her. I guess children don't like cabbage after all. I kept looking around at the place, the town is lively and all the old broken buildings got removed. Many wooden houses are still under construction and there is a stone building being built in the style of solitude too, this seems to be the Dare Dragon Company headquarters. It is a really interesting idea to build a company under the category of investment company, it can just invest in whatever it wants and manage it from the shadows. Joan Hilt used the principle to manage the whole hold from the shadows that way, to tell the truth, I am worried. 
Joan Hild has offended the Bloodsail clan and caused them a lot of damage. I am not worried about Joan Hild himself since he could already become a bright star or a master at such age. His birth sign sure is useful when it comes to manifesting the aura. The thing I am worried about is the town and his friends. He may be protecting them like that but he can't protect them forever. He needs to learn how to be a leader rather than a savior. People lose their way when they lose their saviors. Hey, let go of me. Hmm, what is that? A fight? I told you, tell me where you keep the money or you will not go out again. Let go of me? This is Reem's money, not your booze money. I am the one who gets to decide what the money is for? Tell me where did you hide it? A fight between a man and his wife was taking place in public. From what I could tell, the woman saved some money for the small girl hiding behind her and her husband wants the money to drink. Now they are making a fuss about it in public, the man is overpowering the woman and it seems that she is very afraid of him. I looked around and saw the children around the playing park are getting scared from the scene. Zvul.c Omicron M. Give me the money or else. The man raised his hand and was about to beat up the woman. Well, not on my watch. I held the man's arm and pulled him away from the woman. Huh? What are, let me go? I said let me go, you freak. He said. Freak? I am a cabbage as you can see. I was completely covered in the cabbage custom so let's play it that way. Can you please go shout somewhere else, you are scaring the kids here. I don't care what are you or where is this, let go or. Fine. I let him go, flying. The man fell on the snow and glared at me then went away. Weakling? Are you alright, sister? I looked at the woman who seems to have got scared of me. Is he, is he fine? She was asking about the man as it seemed. Well, if I were you, I would look after that crying kid first. You shouldn't get scared of him like that, sister. Thank you. I and the woman consoled the girl, Reem, until she stopped crying. A cute little angel. I talked to the woman and it seemed she needed some mental push to prevent her useless husband from taking all the money for drinking. It went well in the end. Once she left and I returned to Carrot, I mean Nirana, I found many children looking at me and smiling. Cabbage? So strong. Cabbage? That was amazing. Cabbage? Send my brother flying too. The kids moved from Carrot's side to me. Hehe. <laughs> it seems all of them are now excited about the cabbage and will eat it to become strong. That was Reem's father. You should beat him once again, cabbage. One of the children said. You know Reem? I asked. Yes, she used to come with us but her father started yelling at her every time she comes to play. Another kid said. How horrible? Yes, some time ago, the boss caught him beating Reem and yelled at him. John did. Yes, the boss was so angry. But when the boss disappeared for half a year, he started doing it again. I see, it is like that. I played with the kids until night came and everyone had to go for their homes. I started thinking about Joan Hild once again. He can save as many people as he can but he still can't teach them how to save themselves on their own. Once he leaves, everything may go the way it used to be. I guess I can at least teach him that. If he is going to lead a town, he should lead it right. I think I can't do a naive thing like choosing something for him anymore. That time has long since run out. But I can at least teach him a thing or two. Good job today, Carrot, Cabbage. You have done great. But for some reason, I can't stand how smug he can be. John, don't ever think you can get away with this. Carrot said in a threatening tone. Haha. <laughs> How about some spiced wine that just arrived from solitude? John raised his hand making a peace offer. I don't think a wine bottle will make such a humiliation pass. Oh, good kid. Give me a crate. But it did. Just which one of you did raise the other? I wondered. Me. Him. John's POV. Happy New Year, everyone. I said as I sat on the head of the table. The owner of the house and all that dot I think you should take a look at snovel.c Omicron M. Wolfer, Jal, Nefertiti, Alina, Carrot, and Cabbage were all her. We all exchanged congratulations and sat to eat dinner. Everyone was busy managing with the celebration all day and I was cooking in peace alone. Mammoth kebab, shawarma, some rice that I imported from Suradil was here too, and many other delicacies that I bought only for this gathering were all on the table. That smells so good. Nirana was on the verge of diving into the soup. Ah, to think I will eat my son's cooking before he eats mine. Hildo was touched. Auntie, don't get any funny ideas like that. Last time you almost poisoned a clan in one go. Alina said something dangerous. Annoying cat? Don't eat from my plate, go eat with that hammer's lover. Joel was fighting over food with Nefertiti again. Human? She is bullying me out. John, it has been a year since I ate that shawarma. Good job, bro. Hee <laughs> hee, that's one lively scene. I put the last plate on the table and sat together with the bunch. Wolfer and I have talked last night about my origins and I told him everything. I also apologized for not telling him before as I was not sure of many things. He was overjoyed with what he heard and his reaction was the best. He also could finally understand the previous interactions between me and the fire manies. Joel, how was your day? Great. Alina and I took the annoying cat and hunted together. Then we practiced the signature Atronach spells you made. Aha, uh -huh. I gave Alina the permission to learn my personal version of the Flame Horse Atronach which is far superior to the one I provided to the college. Cabbage and Carrot? Please watch out from the salad or you guys will be regarded as cannibals. Hilda and Nirina looked at me with cold eyes. Hee <laughs> hee, their expressions are priceless. By the way, Hilda, when is that coming of age ceremony thing? It is one week from now, we need to move tomorrow or the day after at the very least. Good, 
I have nothing to do from now on so let's do it tomorrow. Can Jolinar participate with us? Eh, me. Jolinar was taken aback. Yes, both Wolfer and Alina are participating. I said. John, are you sure about that? Hilda said. Something wrong. Well, the clan may see her as the one who tried to kill you once, so. Everything tried to kill me at least once. She didn't stand a chance from the beginning. I said. I'll take your words for it then. Thank you. Jolinar is my shadow. No man lives without his shadow. I said and Jolinar smiled. Hilda laughed and shook her head. So, what will I be expecting in that ceremony? Will I hunt an ice wrath? I asked. Hunting an ice wrath is a common tradition in the coming of age ceremonies around Skyrim. Well, you all have to hunt one each. The ship will take you as well as the rest of the clan's kids to hunt them in a usual spot. Oh, I think I have an idea where is that. Then, after that, for Wolfer and Jolinar, they will receive their war paints and will be considered done with it. For you and Alina, however, this is merely the beginning. Fufu, I am interested now. Hee <laughs> hee, it is not easy. You two will need to awaken your bloodlines. Awaken? More than that. I asked pointing out my height. Haha, <laughs> no, you won't get taller. It will be a trail using some herbs and the extraction you take from the ice wrath. It will cause you to see hallucinations but an adult will get to share these hallucinations with you so you don't get lost in them. That will be me for sure. Oh, oh my, I will smoke weed with my mother. What is the point of these hallucinations? Wolfer asked. They will make the John reach his mind realm and get to recognize his guardian beast. Okay, mind realm? Like the one from Shiagaroth quest when the player enters the mind of a dead emperor? And a guardian what now? Haha, <laughs> I am sure John's guardian beast is a cat. Wolfer said. I also laughed. It is already decided so no need to do it anyway. There are no cats among the guardian beasts. Hilda dropped a bomb. What? I was shocked. The beasts are fox, hawk, dragon, bear, snake, whale, moth, wolf, and owl. Wait a minute. Aren't those the ancient Nordic gods? Sure, Kain, Alduin, Sin, Orki, Shtun, Dibella, Mara, and Ihunal. Oh, you know them? That's true. Wait a second here. This is not simple. This is the ancient Nordic pantheon, the one that originated from the northern continent of Atmora thousands of years ago. Does it still live between the hidden clans? Interesting, but still. I can't accept not having a cat guardian beast. Suit yourself. Hilda said. So, what will happen depending on the result? Jolinar was curious. The Titanborn blood or the Fireborn blood or both shall be awakened into John and he will get all the benefits of being a fire main adult? Of course, John's case is special so he will get a different treatment than the others. As long as I don't get tied above a bonfire and you guys dance around it then I am okay. Haha, <laughs> that's the spirit? You will get to choose the beast you want from the clan if there is any that suits you. I am already fine with Nefertiti. Come on. You can have a big wolf or a bear? You can ride those. Let's see if you have something that can match what I have. Hee <laughs> hee. I don't think any beast will be as awesome as a flame atronach beast. We'll see. The last couple of things are the face paint and a small hunting celebration. Seems fun. If you wish to stay in the clan after that, you can build a house there. We have our little house, me and your father. Oh, my father? I guess I'll get to meet that guy too. To be honest, I am not good with fathers. Past life thingy. Well, he is a prankster and a mage just like you so you guys will get along. Well, I hope. But I want to eat now. The shawarma is just too good. Senior, what do you call that? Alina asked. Oh, that's kofta, you have to try it with that tahini over there. Also the french fries with them makes it a complete deal. Alina did as I said and made an appointment nod. Senior, where is that food originated from? My past life. I said. Eh, past what now? Sigh, ever heard about dragons? 119 the guilty crown. A slash n, big special thanks to at Dedos and at Darth Bane. You guys are awesome. Here, some cold robes and masks. The meal was over and everyone was sleepy. Alina was overwhelmed by the dragon prophecy I told her and had an interesting reaction. According to Hilda, Alina can tell lies from truth due to her unique mystic talent. Me and her playing truth or dare would be a disaster so let's just not try to imagine it. Due to that, it seems that she knew I am not lying but had a hard time believing it. Anyway, everyone was too bloated to think about anything now. The heavenly mammoth kebab and the heaven-defying earth-shattering shawarma were just so good. Even the lady like Alina ate without holding back. I don't get how she can eat without removing her face veil but after she finished eating, she turned around and changed it to a new one. Impressive. Still, it left me disappointed as part of the reason I kept recommending food to her was to see what is under the veil. Lanith told me that Alina is so beautiful to the point that she can ruin a nation. I am not really believing that a beauty can ruin a nation, even though it happened many times in history, but I really wanted to see. Never mind that, I will get a chance later. After the meal, Wolfer brought a wooden box and put it in front of me. I managed to finish those, he said. I opened the box and couldn't help but nod in approval. Bro, your talent is getting scarier day by day. Haha, <laughs> your ideas are getting weirder day by day too. I took out the first item in the box and carried it in my hand. A crossbow. Hilda looked at the strange design and recognized what it's. Not just any crossbow. It is a lever action crossbow. I started explaining how fast and powerful a lever action crossbow can be compared to a bow or a normal crossbow. 
It has a bolt chamber and with every shot and a revolving mechanism, the user can reload it by the lever in a faster and an easier way to reload than the normal crossbow. This is for you Jolinar? I am not sure if there is an enchantment that can make the bolts fly faster or have a better accuracy but I will apply it once I know any. I said. Thank you. Joel took it and was all smiles. I know such an enchantment. Alina said. I'll be counting on you then. I said. I noticed that this junior of mine is trying to be helpful whenever the opportunity arises. Well, I don't mind helpful people at all. I looked at the wooden box and took the second item. A pair of full metal gauntlets made of a heavy metal. They have three short spikes on the knuckles area which is good for punching and the bracer area is big and wide which is good for defending. A pair of fighting gauntlets made of orichalcum. I am not really good with the orcish metal so it took me over a month to finish that with the help of Morbagog from the Creation Club. I must say I am proud of what it turned out to be. Wolfer said. Hee hee, this is so good. Lately, I was fighting more unarmed than using weapons. Of course, weapons are essential but this will make my life easier. I have an enchantment in mind but it will take time to make it so let's do it when I arrive at the fire main clan. Anyway, the day ended and everyone went to pack their things. Tomorrow, we will meet Hilda at her ship. Tomorrow is today. Let's see. Clothes, check. Zvul.c Omicron M. Gear, check. Potion bag, check. Jolinar, check. Reading material, check. Money, check. Nefertiti, check. Nefertiti's food, check. Experiments materials, check. Research paper, check. Hmm, I forgot nothing. I took everything and closed the house. After I walked outside the main gate, I looked back and sighed. I built that house to pass time and laze around in. It has been built for half a year now and I didn't get to stay in it more than 10 days altogether. I said in a remorseful tone. I really love staying at that place as much as how much Nefertiti loves staying in wooden boxes. Trudvar was waiting for me with some men to carry my stuff over to the fire main ship. I left him with a series of orders for the town defense projects and how to deal with any situation when the time comes. I will be in contact with the auger to check on the place from time to time. Now, let's head to the ship. Wolfer seemed to have been waiting at the docks, Alina and Nurina came right after me. Hilda was crashing at Nurina's place so she came with them. Good, everyone is here. Hilda said then looked at her ship and shouted the ramp. The large ship that was silent all the time became lively all of a sudden. Captain, you are back. Someone shouted. No, that's my ghost you are seeing. Oh? We'll go back to sleep then. The ramp you dogs. Yes, right away. The ramp. Move, move. The captain will kill us. The situation is lively up there. The ramp came down and some men came down running. I think you should take a look at Snovel.c Omicron M. Captain, we're ready. We are very awake. No one was sleeping. Hilda was glaring at them and they were all shivering. That's how scary Hilda is when she glares. The men took all the luggage and carried it to the ship. We followed silently. The Guilty Crown was indeed a big ship, something that needs a lot of men to sail. This is not a ship anyone can mess with. Even my small ship was not a thing to compare. We were shown to the quarters and the place was amazing. I was very interested in how these big ships sail. The relationship here is much more strict than a normal ship and all the sailors were armed and looked like professional fighters. As the sun rose, the ship set sail to the open sea. I really was amazed by how organized Hilda's sailors are. They seemed to be your friendly sailors in the beginning but they were all powerful and able. Even compared to the pirates from the Bloodsail clan that I met. The ones here reminded me of the group of warriors that accompanied Alina back on Mount Anther. I was observing all that while enjoying the sea breeze on the deck. Joan Hilt, come, there is someone I want you to meet. Hilda called for me. Who? Just come? It's an old friend of mine. I followed Hilda to the stairs under the deck and arrived at a certain quarter with a large door. Hilda pushed the door open and looked in. Ilva, you are awake. She entered and signaled for me to follow. Just as I went in, I lost half of my brain cells. Holy bananas? Hilda, what in the world? Ha ha. That's my girl, Ilva. Come, she won't bite. What I saw was a bit hard to describe. Let's just say this is a snow white wolf that has grown a little bit too much. It has two long canines coming from its mouth and its blue eyes were similar to Hilda's. It stood up and was a little bit taller than Hilda. She is a dire wolf. Her kind has gone extinct a long time ago outside our clan but there are some of them that live with our clan. I was not listening to Hilda at all. The wolf, or the dire wolf in front of me has taken all my attention. Dire wolves are different from wolves just like how the tigers are different from cats. Those who have an affinity with a certain guardian beast will have an affinity with the other variants of the beast. Just as I thought, if I remember correctly, there is no guardian beast from the spices of cats. Sigh, what a letdown. Haha, <laughs> you are still thinking about cats, aren't ya? Yeah, I heard you gave Horna a big scare that day. Yeah, I was mentally tired that day. Then, what about those whose guardian beasts are dragons, whales, moth? These ones can't be possibly raised. We have a moth cave, they live there around a certain kind of trees. The ones with an affinity to whales are good sailors, they are the reason why our clan is so good at sailing. The ones with an affinity to dragons are good with magic but they are rare, only one of them exists. Dragons? Interesting, who might that be? You old man. Figures. This mysterious father of mine is becoming more and more interesting by the time. How does my father look like? Tall, red hair. 
Other than that, Hilda smiled but I didn't understand what that smile meant. You will meet him soon enough, she said and turned to the dire wolf. You can rest now Ilva, sleep if you can. Hilda patted the dire wolf and talked to her. Ilva sat down whining to Hilda about something. Yeah, I know, don't worry, we will reach ground soon. You can play as much as you want. Hilda said, they seem to have a good understanding of each other. Anyway, after a short while, their conversation ended. From that conversation, I learned how foolish do I look when I speak to Nefertiti in front of people like that. We went up to the deck again and the quartermaster of Hilda told her that we arrived at a certain place, then Hilda sent him to invite Nirina and the rest. What is going on? I asked. He he, I have been waiting for this since last year. Hilda was excited for some reason. Don't tell me, you guys are having a rematch, aren't you? Hilda only smiled and went into her captain quarters. Good grief, this will turn into a serious headache. 120 Hilda vs Nirina. A slash N, big special thanks to at Didos and at Darth Bane. You guys are awesome. Here, some cold robes and masks. We were there, on an island, in the middle of BMFK nowhere. After Hilda invited Nirina to the duel, the ship stopped by a wide flat island that didn't seem to have anything living on it. Hilda came out of her quarters with a sword, an axe, and a spear wearing a full plate armor that looked super cool. Nirina came wearing a blue long skirt and a curious made of thin malachite metal. She was also wearing a crown that gave a strong magical feeling. She had five staves on her back. How many years have passed since I saw her in her battle gear? Hee <laughs> hee, old witch, this won't go like last time. I know, red hag, this time you will eat dirt. For some reason, their fighting spirits were the real deal. Even I was having cold sweet all over my body let alone anyone else. Hilda's aura was overpowering and domineering and Nurina's magic was cold, murderous, and heavy. After we went on the island, Ilva followed us as it seems that she hates ships. We gathered in a good spot and sat down as Hilda and Nurina were trash talking each other. I sat there, beside me was Wulfur who was sharing a drink with me, Alina and Jal sat a bit to the back, while Ilva was just watching while lying down. For some reason Jal and Nefertiti were having a hard time focusing. John, this is. She's called Ilva. And. She is a dire wolf. Like the ones from the children tales. Probably. Human, big doggo. Come here, don't get scared. Naya, big doggo looking this way. Just keep calm and don't look at her. It seems that Ilva left a strong impression on them. Alina, you have seen Hilda fight before, right? How dangerous can she get? I asked. Last time was three years ago, she was fighting a necromancer from Blackbone Clan and she was still trying out the restoration magic, things were pretty scary that day. Blackbone Clan? Interesting, if I remember, Hilda can only use restoration magic that my mysterious old man taught her. Senior, what about Master? Sigh, seven years ago, I and the cranky old man who used to teach me hunting were being chased by witches when we trespassed their territory. Let's just say when Nirina showed up, she played them as if they were children. That was a long time ago and Nirina's power has increased by leaps and bounds since that day. After a round of trash talking, they suddenly quieted down and looked at each other. Hilda's hair was completely covered under her helmet but appeared from its back, she held her big axe and looked at Nirina. Nirina was just chilling while giving Hilda a cold gaze, Nirina was entirely focused like that. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. The air, the sea, the time, the space, all of it froze for a single second and the surrounding became cold as if all the energy in the world were sucked, even the sun got blocked by some gloomy clouds. As lightning fell from the sky, Hilda and Nirina disappeared. As thunder cracked, metal collided high above 10 meters in the air. Nirina is a bat lemage so she can fight with staves in melee perfectly fine. She could even withstand a swing from Hilda. After the clash, Nirina remained in air while Hilda descended to the ground. Nirina is using levitation. After the exchange Nirina threw her staves up and they remained floating midair then took out the other staves and did the same, now she had five staves flying in an orbit around her. One staff started shooting lightning by its own at Hilda who retreated a few steps to evade. The other staves started doing some conjuring. From one spell Nirina can conjure two storm atronax by that speed, the number was already too ridiculous to count. Hilda, who was not using her aura yet, swung her axe and threw it at the atronax. The axe kept flying and hitting several atronax before its power started to fade and fall down. Hilda was not waiting for Nirina so she charged at the Atronax that started to shoot a lot of lightning at her and swung the sword she unsheathed. In her other hand she was using a ward spell to block the magic shot at her by the Atronax. She destroyed some of them then jumped towards Nirina who suddenly disappeared once Hilda reached her. That was teleportation. Hilda seemed to have anticipated where Nirina would appear and threw the sword towards a certain direction. Sure enough Nirina was there. Nirina was too fast and evaded easily then cast several lightning spells or Hilda like a machine gun. Hilda was unfazed and unleashed a strong aura of sunlight. All the Adronax in the diameter of 20 meters were caught on fire and the lightning that Nirina shot was blocked by Hilda with a ward. So Hilda's aura can recreate the effect of the sun aspect, just like a paladin. Hehe, <laughs> red hag, that's a new trick. Nirina was excited. Just don't bore me too much, hurry up and do one of those crazy things you did last time. Well, I didn't want to give the kids any traumas but I have a new trick I want to try. Nirina cast multiple spells in a second and a lot of rune circles appeared midair. 
Senior, can that be possible? Alina freaked out. Well, if you can grasp space as much as Nirana, I am sure you can just imprint the runes midair just fine. Easier said than done though. I replied while trying to make an understanding of what is going on. To do multiple cast in those short seconds was not only casting too fast but was casting more than one spell on the same hand. I read that Archmage Shalitter, the founder of the college, could do four on one hand while two is Nurana's limit but it was still a very overpowering technique. Nurana used her free left hand and flicked her fingers then all the Adronax she conjured before got banished. In the next second, the runes around her flew in an orbit and united themselves in one rune. I could see that some of the circles were from the telepathy aspect and the insinuating effect. The largest one was conjuring a storm Atronach rune circle. I think you should take a look at snovel.siamicron m. I don't understand why but Nurana could easily just mix them in one simple spell without showing off the runes like that, unless. This crazy woman. I thought of something. John. Wolfer asked. She is trying out a new spell she just thought of. Why do I have to be around every time? I was having a series of traumatic experiences going through my mind. Whenever Nurana have an idea, she translates it into a spell right away. Senior, what should we do? Alina seemed to have understood what is going on. She was also pale for some reason. Award? Big enough? Joel? Award? Together. My brain was functioning at an incredible speed and I could only say word tags the understand. I also cast a ward and changed it to focus its defense at lightning negation. My fears came true. The spell was something absurd. Senior, what is she doing? Alina cried as Nirana started to rise more in the era. Conjuring something crazy? A storm atronach? A thrall? Look. I could finally see a void distortion but it was just a little bit too big. Before anything appear from there, lightning came out. It was some wild lightning that struck anywhere randomly. This was a mark that the spell was unstable but it still didn't crumble. Ha ha ha, John, look at that. Let's see your invention coming into reality by me. Ha ha ha. Nurana was excited despite how unstable the summon is. My invention? What crazy shit are you doing this time? Ha ha, behold, that tower thing? Ha ha, do you even know what you are conjuring? I forgot its name. Nurana paused her crazy laughter and thought for a while then decided it is okay. The mutated Atronach was summoned and it started shooting lightning everywhere. John, isn't that? Wolfer recognized it. This crazy Dunmer. I was dumbfounded. Nurana conjured a giant storm Atronach that was almost 15 meters long. From the energy I could sense, this thing was a highly potent Atronach to be conjured in that size. This is a storm Atronach Tesla Tower? Something I and Wolfer researched together but we meant to make it into a mechanical weapon? Not an Atronach. That Tesla tower was shooting its lightning everywhere not even targeting Hilda the way it should be. This spell is simply broken. Ha ha ha. See that, red hag. Hilda who was smiling held the spear on her back and cracked her neck. Looks like I need to get serious too. Sorry, John. But mother is not losing in front of you like that. Hilda's aura changed. It was holy and warm like a paladin just a while ago. Now it started to take a bloody feeling as if there is real blood in the air. Oh no. Alina turned from pale to yellow. What is it? This aura? It is bad news. Why? I shouted as I couldn't hear from the blowing wind and the repeated thunder cracks. Have you ever heard of the bloody Hilda? Ah, isn't that Hilda's name call when she went on rampage 10 years ago? Well, you're about to know why she got the name. I looked back at Hilda who had gone into a berserking state and started running towards the storm at Ronak Tesla Tower in high speed. Once she was halfway through she made a scary shout. So grah done. Hilda performed a Thursday um and her speed became so fast that it was akin to a speeding car. That shout is called elemental fury, speed related, no time to explain. Nirana put her four staves into a star formation and shot a lightning beam from them. Hilda was fast and could evade, she didn't head straight to the storm at Ronak Tesla Tower but she took a little turn and held her spear. In just one second she threw the spear at the storm at Ronak Tesla Tower. The spear traveled in the air in a red beam and exploded when it came in contact with the storm at Ronak Tesla Tower. Half of the gigantic at Ronak crumbled and its unstable nature started to affect its function as it started shooting lightning madly. Gahahaha, old witch, that thing is merely so. Hilda was in the same crazed state of Nirana. Don't underestimate me, now. Nurana did something absurd again and cast a spell at the Atronach. This spell is consume power. It makes the summoned creatures stronger for a short period of time then they die. This is bad. The storm Atronach Tesla Tower started to glow and its power became intense. It will get blown up any second now. Ha ha ha, that's the spirit, old witch. Bring it on, red hag. These two had completely gone berserk. Hilda ran towards Nurana while performing another shout. Lom Rian Kron. And this is the moment when all things went wrong. John? That Thursday um is. It is not a Thursday um from the game but I understood each word. Lom means water. Ryan means wave. Kron means gulp, that. I pointed at the sea on behind Hilda. Kron means tide. 121 we are home, Joan Hilt. Achoo. Yep. You deserve it. I am happy you guys are like this. It was a miracle we survived that tidal wave. The wave swept the small island and removed it from the place completely as if it never existed in that place before. I just didn't want to imagine how crazy would it get when the sea water and that storm Atronach bump into each other so I carried Joel in a hand and Nefertiti the other then ran back to the ship. 
Wulfur, Alina, and Ilva followed and jumped back on the ship. Just after we arrived, the disaster occurred. Well, everyone already knows what electricity plus water means. After the water settled down, Ilva jumped in the water and fished too passed out Hilda and Nirina. The dire wolf was carrying them both in her mouth and threw them on the deck. As we took them to a warm place, they started saying all sort of crazy stuff. How did it look like? Which one of us won? Hilda was asking in a maddened state. No one replied. Still, Nirina and Hilda were looking me. Especially me. Joan Hilt? Tell me, I was the better mom, right? Hilda said. So that was what the fight is all about. Red Hag, it is still too early for you. Of course this is my win. Shut up, old witch. You are just afraid of losing. Tell me, Joan Hilt. You both are. Sigh, you know what? I am out of here. It seems that electricity plus water has made a score on their minds. I can grasp the way their heads work when it gets like that. If all the fire manies are like that, then I will pack my things and leave. Nirina is already a mental burden as she is. I am not ready to waste what is left of my brain cells on some brainless warmongers. Anyway, this fight proved many things. I can't look down on the hidden clans at all. If Hilda is already that crazy strong fighter and a voice master above all that, then there should be more among those clans and I need to get to the bottom of why there are some voice masters like her, Alina, and Alina's father. It really was bothering me but still, my Thursday um is far stronger than them. One more thing? The Moonblade clan has a sacred ground, that is Mount Anther where one can find a word wall. If every clan is like that, then there are a relationship between the clans, the word walls, and many other things including these weird bloodlines. I guess a real world sure has more than what a game can offer. I wanted to ask all these questions but I think some answers should just come on their own. I don't want to answer many questions about myself too especially when I am fooling around with that dragon prophecy. I mean, it is fun, but it will backfire on me when things get crazy few years from now. Still, I will surely laugh hard at that. I am preparing a bigger prank for that day. After she calmed down, Hilda gave the command for the ship to sail and she caved in her quarters. Three days have passed and we now arrived at the mouth of the White River, the longest river in Skyrim. The ship was sailing directly to Windhelm. The Guilty Crown didn't dock in the city's docks but instead docked beside a small platform on the other side of the river. It seemed that we won't be entering the city which is a good thing. The time was still in the morning and it seemed we are going to travel on land. Hilda went down first and the rest followed. She jumped on Ilva's back and looked at me. Want to ride with mom? Nope. Come on. Don't be shy. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. Nope. She won't bite. I know. The problem is not Ilva. Hilda was disappointed but I have already conjured a flame horse Atronach. Hilda kept looking at it with wide eyes. Come to think of it, she haven't seen it before. John? Can mommy come ride with you? Nope. Nirina? Stop grinning, damn it. It seems that Nirina took the chance to make fun of Hilda. Nirina herself was riding a storm Atronach Goor which is her favorite form for some childhood reason. A slash N, Goors are bipedal reptilian creatures native to Morrowind. I think you should take a look at Snovel.C Omicron M. The reason why Hilda looked at the flame Atronach horse like that was explained by Alina as it seemed that the fire manies has a massive fetish for burning things and setting things on fire. Well, it is not every day when someone can be a member of a family of arsonists. What a time to be alive. After a short argument between Hilda and Nirina, we hit the road all together. I was going to conjure something for Wolfer but he rode one of the horses the fire manies prepared beforehand. The plan was to reach Kynes Grove before the sun sets. We took a road different to the road of the travelers as it seemed Hilda can't travel there on the back of a dire wolf. It was surprisingly a very smooth uncharted route that Hilda knew well. In less than half a day, we reached Kynes Grove. Kynes Grove is a small mining settlement located in East March. It is located directly south of Windhelm. The place has a malachite mine and some farms which I learned from Hilda that these are all fire main property. It was also said that the trees in Kynes Grove are scared to Kyn, the Nordic goddess of the storm and the warrior wife of Shore, and the trees must not be cut. I remembered Hilda saying that Alina is also very connected to Kyn. Because when we entered Kynes Grove, she mentioned something about the natural energy of the place. Still, connected to Kyn. I guess Alina didn't manage to acquire that annoying wind magic for nothing. Wind is the mix of fire, frost, and shock magic so it was troublesome and I gave up on the project as its magic hawk consumption was insane but it seems that Alina didn't face that problem. There should be a truth for here being connected to Kyn or whatever then. We passed Kynes Grove to the east, and took the road going up the mountain range, after a while we arrived at a strange circular mound. This is one of the 22 ancient mounds scattered throughout the nine holds of Skyrim. They are mysterious places that no one can dig. Hilda acted as the tour guide. Everyone looked to the mound with different ideas in mind. Guess I'll have to add to their information. No one can dig them because they are sealed by ancient magic. These are actually ancient dragon burial mounds, the final resting place of these creatures when they were slain centuries ago. I said. Wow. Jelinar was the only one who reacted. Hilda looked at me and made a silly smile. If that is true then you grandfather and your father will love you so much, you will be proving that the fire manies has a dragon at their doorstep. She said and laughed. Well, I am glad that they are open-minded about dragons. I am planning to make friends with one of them when the time comes. But, I think you just said doorstep. I remarked. Oh, 
We are close. Let's hurry before dinner. Hilda said and Ilva ran fast. We followed and kept climbing up the road. The area started to get colder but we then arrived at the foot of a standing mountain. No one talked as we expected more. Hilda then took out a horn and blew it. After a few seconds, part of the mountain's wall moved. Haha, this is cool. I've never seen a house with a door horn before. I said. You have never seen a lot of things. Let's go. Hilda took the lead and rode in. What we went into was a large tunnel that almost had no lighting. We lit the way ourselves and rode in. The mountain wall closed itself behind us. It wasn't a long tunnel and we could see light from the other opening. Once we got there we arrived at a glade in the middle of the mountain. The place was vast and in the night it looked calm, it had a lot of green lands and a big lake. It looked so calm and peaceful as if it is disconnected from the outside world. And it actually is. A large settlement appeared at the other end of the glade and it seemed as if there was a large building in its end. A fortress of some sort. The houses of the settlement appeared to be normal and had its lights on. No one would believe a normal place like that exists in such a disconnected area. Except it is not normal when one rethink it again. Hilda jumped down from the back of Ilva and kept patting her hen said that she will come check on her later. Ilva then left on her own. Doesn't she live with you? I asked. No, she has her own home and family? Make no mistake, Ilva is not anything like a pet. She is a friend and partner in crime. Hilda said the last part with a laugh. I guess she is right. Ilva always acted naturally and calmly. She didn't carry a saddle for Hilda to ride on to. Hilda, you arrived. An old voice sounded. Oh Mord, you are on the gate duty tonight. Hilda replied back. It seems this old man was the one who opened the gate. Yes yes, shall I bring you a horse to ride home? He asked. No, no need. Hilda waved for him and he smiled and left. She then looked at me. I have nothing to ride now so I will be riding with you, Joan Hilt. Hilda moved so fast and jumped behind me. Sigh, I guess I should be glad this is not a real horse. Let's hurry, let's hurry, I smell dinner from here. I rode forward but I could hear her saying something to me in a faint voice. We are home, Joan Hilt, 122 Fire Main, 1. Extra large thanks to at Paolo Partizani. The cult has a new member? Part of me always really wanted to have all that. A family? There are many things I did realize about myself that changed a lot throughout the years. For example, in my past life, I was never a brave person. I would never care about many things other than how to pass the day by the day. I was only thinking how to make money and find a girl to marry then get old and becoming a boring old man. I was never this dare even though I always hated it when the word was said to me. However, part of me is still the same old rascal who like pranks, the super nerd part also stuck around. At first, one may think that those were nothing but changes in personality because of getting the experience of doing new things in a new world. But I feel it is a bit different, too different from my old way of life. It made me afraid at first because the old me hated change but I decided to give up a little on trying to contain a certain part of me and to let it have its ways more often. That part of me gave me a lot of opportunities and helped me make a lot of friends. That part of me has felt a lot of happiness when it saw all those people who look exactly like the current me. I neglected thinking about that part many times but I realized it always had a share in control. Always had a hand on the wheel, the one I can never refuse, the one who wants to hug Hilda and tell her how much it loved her and how it missed her, the one that wants to get along with everyone in this room around me. It can't go out of my control but it had an influence on me. The influence that pushes me to be a proud Nord, to be a bit racist, to love doing the right things, and to be a wolf that likes to have a lot of beauties around. This is the original John. The one whose Hilda gave birth to 16 years ago. I, as a whole person, am not the one from my past life anymore, and also not the original John himself. I am but a new person who got to have the both characters in his system. I can be a foolhardy Nord and a tactful otherworlder in the same time because of the two inside my head. Let's think of it as I am the best of both worlds. Anyway, that is nothing to be scared of as it is my strongest point. I managed to make a lot of things only thanks to the mentality I inherited from both of the other world or lawyer and Joan Hilt Firemain. But still, I need to see to this situation around me. It looks I have kept silent in my head long enough and that old man is looking at me like a predator that found its prey trying to scare me. Hee <laughs> hee, as if I care though. Back to the present. Joan Hilt, put down your hood when you walk into the town, your red hair is what you should show off the most. The town has a some houses that serve our clan so make sure to get along with them. The people inside the fort are your family, your brothers, and sisters, they won't resist the idea of testing your mettle but you can always beat them up. Also, when you meet with your grandpa, don't let him intimidate you, you can try to beat him too but I doubt you can. Hilda started reading the fire main manual book on me. I was listening and nodding feeling not bothered at all of being instructed like that. I truly just wanted to listen to these words forever. Every fiber of my being would just obey them. Still, I am more interested in the things I shouldn't do among the fire mainies. You know, that part which is always written in the last page which everyone neglects reading and always gets into trouble. I was a bit bothered by that. Haha, <laughs> I guess you are right. Listen, your case is special for more than one reason that I will explain later so the clan will treat you with care no matter what you do. The most important thing is not to harm your fellow clansmen or the townsfolk and never cause harm any member of the beast tribes that live in the glade with us. I get it, but beast tribes. There are six of them, seven if you count the ancestor moth glade. Holy shit, you have an ancestor moth glade. I freaked out. 
This is seriously unexpected but still possible. The ancestor moth bears a close resemblance to the atlas moth, the largest moth in the silk moth family. These insects has a cult dedicated to them and it is known as the ancestor moth cult. They raise the moth and use their silk. Also due to a certain characteristic in the ancestor moth, being around them helps with reading the Elder Scrolls. They were here before our clan finds this place. The original natives of the area if you want to call them that way. You know that there are several ancestor moth glades throughout Skyrim and it is not that unusual, right? I know, but I have never been to any. I said. Well, as I was saying, the rules are simple. Don't harm anyone from the clan, don't cause trouble in the outside world for our clan, and don't look down on people just because you belong to the clan. Hmm? I am fine with the first as long as no one is bothering me, the second is a bit hard to control as I have a full influence over a hold now, the third is not a problem. I will even not reveal my identity to not be targeted by the clan enemies. Well, regarding the first rule and between you and me, you can beat Oblivion out of anyone you want, just don't get them bettered in. As long as they can walk after it. What if I got bullied or got some unfavorable treatment? You know I won't be staying, right? No one dares. Hilda said in a cold tone, kinda scared me there. I'll take your words for it. I said. Zvul.c Omicron M. The town looked nice but was dormant and quiet. We actually are arriving late at night which is pretty convenient to me. I don't want to interact with a lot of people. The building style reassembled that of Whiteron hold which have triangular roofs with dragon heads on top of it. It was nice. In the end of the glade, there appeared a large stone wall with some people holding torches on top of it. Hilda signaled to them and the gate of the fort opened. We walked past in. I thought this was the end of the glade but it seemed there is more. As we rode in, I noticed that it we are at a place like a training yard. There were many guards around and all they were doing was staring at us. Hilda urged me to ride forward and we arrived at another gate that opened once we arrived. I could see a keep after that gate. I rode forward to it. And its gate opened. I think you should take a look at snovel.c omicron m. Oh, the third lady has arrived. Someone announced. The keep inside appeared to have a stable which made me know that this is where the ride ends so I jumped down from the flame atronach horse and and everyone followed my pace. Auntie. Two children with red hair came from the stables running at Hilda. Ha, huh? you two aren't sleeping yet. Hilda received them and carried them both up. They seemed to be a boy and a girl. Twins? We heard that you will be having a child? We came to play with him. The boy said. I said it will be a girl? I will play with her. The girl said. Hilda was speechless. Alina and the rest were laughing inwardly. Sigh. Kids. They can be merciless. And how did you two find out? Hilda seemed to have spotted another problem. If I remember, my arrival to the clan was something that was supposed to have been handled quietly. We heard half their talking about it with Vladimir. The girl said. They also said that Alina will be coming. The boy said. Sigh. They don't just shut up, do they? Hilda looked tired. She then put down the kids and looked at me. Joan Hild, this is Eirik and Sini, son and daughter to your uncle Hermod. I looked at the two brats who seemed to be cute at the first glance but felt a bit too naughty. They also looked towards me but they weren't focused on me at all. Figures? Auntie? Is that horse on fire? It seemed that what Alina said was true. Can we take to the stable? The girl asked me. T, those eyes? She is making puppy eyes? Who do you think I am? I have the greatest skill of them all. Puppy eye resistance show your effect. Too bad for you? I am a cat person. I cast banish on the flame Atronach horse. Like it now, puppy eye heathen? The girl, Sini was shocked when the Atronach disappeared in the void. That was just magic, Sini? Big brother Joan Hilt can teach it to you, right Joan Hilt? Hilda smiled at me but she seemed annoyed for some reason. Really? The girl who was on the verge of crying became excited. Humph? As long as you ditch the false puppy eye creed and follow the teachings of the holy cat, then it is a yes. Yay. The girl became happy. Auntie, weren't you bringing away your child? Isn't that one an adult already? The boy Eric seemed to have noticed at last. Well, Hildo was about to explain. It is because I follow the teachings of the cat goddess, I can become an adult in not time. I interrupted. Whoa. The boy was taken by Atu. Fu fu fu. This clan has never recognized cats as sacred beasts before, but my arrival here will mark the day of the change. Or I found a new prank to play on kids. Either way, the first two cousins I met were friendly enough. Let's hope it turns out well. Point 123 Fire Main, 2, Grandpa Tormund. As we walked in the fort, it wasn't too long since we arrived at a hall. Let's just say, those people who hated redheads from my past life will kill themselves if they saw that scene. Every single head has a degree of red on it. I couldn't help but grin from what I saw. Still, the pressure from bringing looked at by all these people caused me some shivers. I intercast scan and the number of people in here was almost around 60 something. So these are the Fire Mainies. In my mental image, the hall had nothing but chairs and tables. It has no high area for elders to sit on or all that. Just the entrance here and another there with a big fire pit in the middle that had three cows being roasted on it. The hall itself looked gorgeous. It was like 60 by 30 meters big. There was a table on the other side of the hall that had few strong auras there. Joan Hilt. Hilda called as she wanted me to follow her. I followed Hilda and Alina took the rest and joined the group of people on the side. We walked across the hall and all the fire manies around were silently looking at me. I put on some serious expressions and didn't get intimidated by the air around the hall. 
Still, I felt happy for some reason. We arrived at the table and the people on it stood up, except two, a man whose hair is red and eyes are blue with a ridiculous beard done in braids and a woman whose hair is jet black and eyes are light gray. They both looked as if they are in the people who stood up. By the way, among the ones who stood up, there were Scaddy, and Jord, and the owl guy who I don't remember his name, there was also a very unexpected person. Tor? He doesn't look that much of a redhead. Why is he here? Pa? Ma? Hilda sounded a little bit awkward in her speech. So the ones who were sitting down are my grandparents? Pretty friendly? My grandma who I don't her name yet raised her brows and spoke. Well, there you are, stranger. Where have you been to since last month? Her voice carried a hint of you are so screwed. Ma, I was hunting. I took the Ilva and the ship. For some reason, I have seen this conversation before when girls go out and return home late. Hunting, huh? A giant sea serpent or an emperor mudcrap this time. A shark queen, Hilda said while not making an eye contact. I see. The grandpa spoke. By any chance, did you use a keg of fire honey wine as a bait? Fire honey wine? Wasn't that the wine Hilda and Nuri? Oh, I see. Hilda had the expressions of someone facing a crisis. The two were gazing coldly at her to the point I could feel their gaze. I had to take a step away from her. Hilda felt it and looked at me as if she felt like being betrayed. Father, this is Joe. She pointed at me and tried to change the subject but her words were cut in. I know who he is, we still aren't done with you, the man said. For some reason, all the attention switched from me to Hilda completely. Hilda who was getting smaller and smaller seemed like she got enough of it and looked at the man with a sneer. You know what, it was delicious. I drank the whole keg with my friend in two days. John got some too. Hilda seemed to have come to a realization that the only way out of this is forward. You, you drank the whole keg. The man's face turned pale. Till the very, last, drop. Hilda was taking a stance as she was speaking. The man stood up and he was looking at Hilda as if he lost a son to her. I will squeeze it out of your bones if I have to. He was about to jump over the table but he got pulled back to his seat by the woman next to him. He kept looking at Hilda and said, Later, Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. Silence took over but the woman cut it. Hilda. She winked to Hilda. Sigh. This is Joan Hild son of Joan Rid son of V E Firemain. Joan Hild. These your grandpa and grandma, Tormund and Jenna Firemain. Tormund and Jenna? From what I see grandpa is a Firemain but grandma is a Moonblade. They all looked at me and smiled gently. I think you should take a look at Snovel dot C Omicron M. This is Enjord, you met him before, he is your oldest uncle, this braggy my second brother, Balder the third, Fursetti, Heimdall, Skadi my twin, Tyr, Hermod, and the youngest is Vali, I slash N, recognize these set of names. They all nodded with a smile. Still, that is a lot to take in. I've met Enjord and Skadi before, Fursetti is the guy I met in Donstar who had an owl on his shoulder and he also gave me a hand in acquiring my first ship. I also met Tyr in Donstar but he called himself Tor and was with a man I called Old John and another who was called Gulmit. So he is a firemane and an uncle to me at that, his hair is not red though, it is a bit brown. If you are wondering about Tyr then he just didn't inherit the fireborn blood but he inherited the moonborn blood with the titanborn blood too. He is half a firemane and half moonblade. Hilda seemed to have read my mind. Yeah, we met in Donstar and he taught me stuff about the aura. I said. He he, good, you remember? Did you manage to release it? Tyr asked me. Naturally. I said. The aura is not hard to use. Tyr that day told me many things about it as it was something that also called battle spirit. Ha ha. Arrogant prick, I'll put that to test myself. He <laughs> he, bring it on. I accepted the invitation. Fine, Joan Hild, this is the rest of the family, this is Sand, Gunmer, Fregia, Sina, Zul, Vika, Vladimir, Ragnar, Leela, Kara, Hafther, Borna, Ingrid, Valka, Rita, Eirik, and Sini. Hilda introduced me to around 60 people in exactly a minute, she pointed at every person and said their names. One per second. How much do you remember? All of them, I said and the people around laughed at me. There is no way I can possibly remember all of their names. Or is it? Sini, Eirik, Rita, Valka, Ingrid, Bhorna, Hafther, Kara, Leela, Ragnar, Vladimir, Vika, Zul, Sina, Fregia, Gunmer, and Zand. Yeah, I like the expressions they made. Don't make fun of me ever again or else. Well, he is Jonrad's son after all. Grandpa Tormund then laughed. Seems like my old man can do weird stuff too. I like him already. Truth be told, I ordered the system to make the names of the people I recognized appear over their heads so when I see them I don't forget their names. It proved to be a useful technique against Hilda's prank here. Grandpa Tormund stood up and came in front of me. Joan Hilt, I'll speak formally to you now, he said and cleared his voice. For many years we always knew that there is a blood of ours got taken away by fate. We couldn't fight that fate and we didn't want to from the beginning as it was not something a man would endanger his family to fight. I, as the patriarch of the clan, am not apologizing for the decision I made even if you, son of my daughter, resented me for it. But as your grandpa, I have many things I need to apologize for. Many regrets and many memories you should have had were all deprived of you by the coward decision I took 15 years ago. In the past, I would have never thought that a day would come and I make the decision that son of Jonred and the grandson of V would be left in the world to fend for himself alone. Grandpa Tormund seemed to have had a lot in heart. 
When he stood and came to me, I noticed that all fire manies around were standing around. He kept going about things from the past when he and his distant cousin and best friend, my other grandfather who was called V. Firemane, survived the Great Collapse in Winterhold and went as refugees to their friends in the Moonblade clan. Since then, they were taken into the Moonblade and got married to the daughters of the Patriarch then were assisted to rebuild the clan once again in the Hidden Glade. It seems that V. Firemane has died early in battle alongside his wife and they left their son Jonred who was to become the next Patriarch but as Jonred's birth sign was the serpent he wouldn't be able to inherit the Patriarchship and the one who had to inherit it was Grandpa Tormund. It seems that those who are born under the serpent can't inherit the leading positions in the hidden clans and has no rule in management, all their political rights are to be passed to their children. It is not a sort of bullying, those who are born under the serpent also can be considered exceptions and the clan doesn't bother them with its rules. They are free from both ordering and being ordered, they are also considered the most special people in the clan and they get a better treatment. I once read in a book called The Firmament the serpent wanders about in the sky and has no season, though its motions are predictable to a degree. No characteristics are common to all who are born under the sign of the serpent. Those born under this sign are the most blessed and the most cursed. This is the reason why the hidden clans don't associate the ones born under the serpent in politics as their fates are not ordinary and may cause the clan to get into a lot of trouble. Jonred, my father, was to be the next patriarch but he was born under the serpent. His child then was to inherit his right by the law. I wanted to make a big cringe but another bomb fell down on my head. But you too, child, are also born under the stars of the serpent. Phew. This is why unless Hilda bears another child with Jonred, the child of Jonhild Firemane will be the patriarch of the clan when his time comes. I don't know how to feel about that but I will apologize for my son for this. Listen, Jonhild, I know you may take this as something annoying to take in but you should know one thing. Among the Firemanes, you are the one with the thickest blood. You are the grandchild of both me and V, the last two of the Firemanes who survived the collapse. So it was my dearest wish to bring you here to your clan. I know you have something to say, maybe something you are angry about, please, say it. To tell the truth, I wasn't expecting many things like me being born under the serpent and me having the thickest firemane blood, or that the patriarch of the firemanes would be this welcoming. If I have to say it then sorry to disappoint you. I don't feel any resentment or need a lot of explaining. I already understand what you feel to a certain extent. I too would do anything to push a disaster away from the people I love. And then I am not worthy of that praise even if my firemane gene in my blood was made of pure crystals. But as I got your feeling, and allow me to address you as grandfather, as I got your feelings, I became aware of the place they came from and how much you would do to make this family safe. So on behalf of those who can't say it, thank you so for what you did to the clan, you took the right decision at the right time. And as for me, I totally see no harm in any of what happened. Without it, I would have never met the friends I have and the family I built. So thank you once again for the opportunity. And one last thing. I took a deep breath and looked around. I'll be in your care. Underscore 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 on a slash n before you say anything. The next chapter will be about his father. And this is not me killing the usual drama and rivalry between family members. It all will happen so don't roast me on the comments just yet. 124 Fire Main 3. To thank me for such a thing, the kid sure is merciless. Grandpa was speaking while grinning. Grandpa invited me and Nirina to the front table. They hammered us with questions about this and that while the food was being served. One thing I noticed, the firemanies knew how to eat. Many types of meat and drinks were put in front of us. Archwizard Nirina Aaron, it's an honor to receive you in our clan. Grandma Jenna has taken Nirina to the side and started getting close to her. To them, the woman who raised me was an already part of the family. Nirina, on the other hand, was on the verge of tears. It seems that Grandma talked a lot and asked Nirina about everything there is to ask about me and Alina. Nirina, however, seemed to be very hungry to the point that she cast muffle on her stomach to not make it growl. Hilda. I whispered to Hilda who was sitting right next to me. Hmm. Someone is missing. I gave her a hint. She narrowed her eyes thinking of what I meant then looked around. In an instant, Hilda's face turned stiff. Father? Where is Jonred? She asked in a loud enough voice for Grandpa to hear. As expected from everyone around, they are all great fighters so they heard Hilda clearly. Their reaction, however, was a bit off. All of them froze and put down the food. Grandpa himself was no exception. Nirina who was about to eat put down the food and gave me the screw you look. He is in the fire garden. Grandma said and looked away. It seems even the mother doesn't want to make an eye contact with an angry Hilda. But what's with that fire shrine? Hilda eyes became even sharper and became very angry. Listen, Hilda, you know how he is. I tried to go after him but he was already deep in the garden. Grandpa was talking softly to Hilda. He knew Joan Hild is coming. He knew and he went into that place anyway. Hilda was inwardly infuriated but she only spoke it in a low tone. She seemed so frustrated over what happened. I guess my old man is doing things at his own pace too. Hmm? The uncles around also looked as frustrated as Hilda but I didn't really think too much about it. If he doesn't want to see me then that's his choice. Hilda, whatever it is, it's okay. I said. Hilda looked at me but she was still frustrated. You know what? 
It's okay as you said. She said and took a mead tankard then drank it on one go. She seemed to be still angry but at least she calmed down. The rest also calmed down and returned back to eating silently. Nirana took the chance and bit on her food. It is a shame not to meet him. I thought he would be a cool person and we could get along if he is a great mage as rumored. The nearest uncle to me was Tyr. From what I know about Tyr, he is a former blade which means he is good at spying. He is also very close to my father. I winked to him and he looked at me. What is the fire garden? I moved my lips. I'll show you the place later. He replied using the same method. Hmm? Seems like it was an invitation. I didn't think too much about it and started eating. The food was too damn delicious. After the late meal, I got to talk to the rest of the fire manies in the hall. My impression on them started getting better over the time. The most impressive thing is how open they were to magic. There is a saying that the hidden clans seem to have established their powers based on magic alongside might. Cousin. Someone slapped my back while greeting me. I looked at who it is and it was someone very familiar that got very tall. Zvul.siomicron M. Bhorna. Fancy seeing you? You became taller than what I expected you would be. Same goes for you. Hee <laughs> hee. It has been a year. Now, let's find a place to set. She said looked around. Wolfer and Alina are that way. I activated my scan and found Wolfer for her. Alina? Right. I haven't seen her in a long time. Bhorna said and took the lead. I wanted to laugh but I stayed silent and followed. When we reached the table we found Alina, Wolfer, Jal, Nefertiti, and my two young cousins Sini and Irik. There were also some more fire main members that seemed to be my cousins from the same age. Ah, here they come. One of them stood up. Come, sit. Try to recall our names again as you did back then. He seemed to like the trick. Fine, you are Hathor, and they are Fregia, Vika, Vladimir, Ragnar, and Vilker. I said. Ahaha, how can you do that? He laughed. I didn't ask to be born this awesome but it happens this way. He always says this kind of stuff. Alina said that I think you should take a look at Snovel.Siomicron M. Haha, <laughs> come sit here, this will be fun. Hathor pushed Vladimir to make a place for me beside him. I laughed and sat around with them on this table. After the first round of mead, I started to get to know them better. They are all turning 16 this year so we all will be at the ceremony together. The first and the most talkative one is Hathor, he is also the most friendly and the largest one among us. Next is Fregia, Enjord's daughter and a quiet cool beauty. Vika and Vladimir are twins, girl, and boy, they have negative personalities as Vika likes to fool around while Vladimir is quiet and seems to be a strong mage. Ragnar has a thin presence and sharp eyes, he seemed to be very similar to Uncle Fursetti so I realized he is his son. And finally, Vilker who was a full-time foolhardy. A funny bunch that is very strange to find in one place unless they are a family like that. After laughing around about this and that, Hathor started talking business. So we were saying, a week from now, we will go together on a ship. One of the elders shall accompany us so we won't spend it all on merry time, that is for you, Vikar. Anyway, there is an island up in the north that has a lot of ice wraiths. We go there, we hunt ten of them, and we return. If the wind was on our favor, then we will do it in five days, else it will take a week. We all nodded. What is the upper time limit? I asked. Two weeks? Are you good on a ship? I own some back at Winterhold, sailed many times so I will be of help. I said. Own some? Cousin, you are making me jealous. Haha. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Anyway, as you can see, we are five boys and five girls, you boys know what does this mean, right? Everyone looked at him waiting for an answer. This a competition? We can't let the girls do better than us this time. Hathor announced with a laugh. Vladimir had a tired face and the rest went pale. Fregia, Vika, Bhorna, and even Alina snorted in disdain. You still want to settle the score? Let me tell you, not even Senior John can help you this time. Alina seemed to have a score against Hathor. Don't think that you will have your way again. The numbers are equal this time. Yes, let them think like that, Alina. I am curious what kind of excuse will Hathor use this time when he eats dirt. Again, Bhorna who was normally quiet got excited too. What is this all about? I asked. Senior, don't let him fool you. Every time he picks a fight he loses and he comes with an excuse. He is a sore loser. Fufu? Seems interesting. How is the score so far? I asked a simple question. The girls laughed in a savage way and the boys got smaller. The boys never won. It has been a long time and we already stopped counting. Fregia said. Sigh. It seems like I can't look down at even the girls. This is seriously scary. Still, I am more interested in the guardian beast ceremony. I said to divert the subject. Oh, that. They all looked serious. What is with it? I asked. Nah, nothing. It is just a little scary when you hear about that soul realm. Vladimir said. Does any accident happen? I asked. No, it is the safest part. But my older brother said it gets scary when you see what is inside your mind from a different view. Fregia said. Yeah. Kara told me that she had to fight an image of herself then fall from the sky to catch a hawk. Hathor himself looked terrified. Oh, is it some sort of FDBR? I have a bad experience with this stuff. The six fire manies on the table with me started telling tales of the horrors one sees in his mind. It made me think twice before getting excited for such a thing. Seems like it's not all rainbows and unicorns around her. You know what time is it, kids? Everyone has gone to sleep already. A voice interrupted the conversation and it seemed like that was Uncle Tyr. 
Everyone looked at him and started to complain but he was the party crusher this time. After we all started going up he came close to me and said he wants to show me something. I excused myself and followed him to the outside of the fort. You remember Gulmit and old John? He asked. I do. Good. I am taking you to the fire garden. Hurry before anyone sees us. He said. The fire garden? Isn't that where my father went? Why are we going there? I asked. Simple. Old John wants to see you there. 125 fire main. 4. Little bastard. Old bastard. I slash n. I am changing the extra chapter from SDW 3 colon 1 arstam to 1 colon 1. I feel like I want to write more arstam. Underscore 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 on. Hey, Uncle Tear, what is wrong with this place? The fire garden? This place was here before father decides to settle in this land. I mean, there is no volcano or anything under this land, right? No, this place was formed since a long ago. Mother says it has something to do with the eruption of the Red Mountain. Does everything have to do with the damn Red Mountain nowadays? Beats me. Anyway, your father, you can find him in there. Well, good for him, or what is left of him. Hee <laughs> hee, you are one arrogant prick, he'll like you. I am not asking to be liked. Why are you bringing me here anyway? To bring him our, of course. Why would I want to? I am not some crazy dragon knight who bathes in fires or whatever. Don't you want to see you father? He'll come out when he gets bored? And it seems like Hilda will give him an earful. Pfft. Tyr started laughing. A few minutes ago, Tyr told me to come and see old John. I was a bit surprised later to learn that old John, the one I met in Dawnstar nine months ago, is actually Jonred Firemain, my father? I was surprised but not too surprised like Tyr thought I would be. First, I was raised as an orphan so I didn't have too much faith in parents thing. Second, my mental self is 40 years old so I won't be shaken like the 16 years old I look like. So Uncle Tyr was taken aback most of the time by my cold attitude towards my father and all that. Anyway, after followed Tyr outside the fort and also went away from the town, we arrived at a crater surrounded by high walls. It was called the Fire Garden for a very good reason. It is a burning place filled with lava. It wasn't like a lake of lava or anything, it was just a place with too many small ponds all around the crater. The mysterious thing about the place is that these small ponds don't cool down no matter what. The place also is very hot that even the fire manies can't go deep to the center of the crater. It's said that the only people who reached the center of the crater were Grandfather V.E. Firemane and my father Jonred Firemane. So, you think that this handsome me will go through this piece of hell to see someone that he never met before just because that is his father. Now that you put it that way, I guess you are rig. Fuck yeah. What? Excuse me. I am going in. Are you sure? Like hell I am sure. Still, I am called John Dare for goodness sake. If I don't go in there because I am afraid, what do you think people will call me? John not Dare. I know you got excited but don't think of this place as something you can go through easily, you are not some sort of a flame atronach. Also, don't go in there with a flame atronach you say. Hmm, did I say something wrong? No, I just thought why not go in there with a style. I know that look. My sister always make it when she is about to do something very, very wrong. Hee <laughs> hee, I think I will enjoy this one. Before you go in there, be careful with the fumes, they are poisonous and really are not a thing I want to get near to. Rho alpha and d alpha s n omicron v epsilon l dot c omicron m. Fine. Anything else I need to be careful with. Don't get yourself hurt, of course. Yeah, sure. I went a bit to the back and cast a spell. A flame atronach hawk came out. That will do the trick. Whoa, I think you are going to do something really bad. Come on. I'll go to the heart of this garden and get out. Don't forget to tell Jonrid to come out. Well, I'll ask nicely. I said as I jumped on the flame atronach hawk and flew up on the edge of the fire garden. The place was vast. I could see all the fire main domain from this altitude and I must say it is a nice place. On one corner of the glade, there was this large fire crater that was formed due to unknown reasons but it is a place that had a lot of fire energy. Still, the energy was very wild. I tried to absorb some of it while being on the flame atronach hawk and it felt like so aggressive yet I managed to control it in the end. After some thinking, I realized that the energy is not coming from the fire in the area but it is what keeps the area on fire. If I manage to cultivate my energy in such a place, I might get a lot of benefits but I still need to do some tests. This swap of inferno or fire garden or whatever is sure something that made me curious. I was still flying on the edge to gain enough altitude and get a better scene of the inside of the fire garden. The problem is that the more I go up, the more the fumes get thicker in the air so I need to get in from a lower height. I chose to fly because the area down there will be super unbearable to walk into. I may face a problem in landing but at least I can turn back anytime as the flame atronach hawk will not be bothered by any kind of heat at all. After a minute or two, I saw a good place to go into the fire garden from, it will be derish but hey, who am I? Okay, nice, and easy. I made my mind and directed the flame atronach hawk into the fire garden. It started to get hot the moment I passed the edge of the fire garden. It was as if an oven was spewing its heat out. I think you should take a look at snovel.c omicron m. Truly marvelous? But it was not enough to put me down just yet. I navigated left and right while making the flame atronach hawk fly as slow as possible. 
After a few seconds, I reached the point where breathing was something painful. Sigh, this won't end well at this rate. Next time, I will make a flame atronach power armor. Well, I tried once and it didn't work. After a minute, I finally saw a big rock in the middle of the garden. It was as if this was the thing that made the crater or part of it. I cast flameskin and unleashed the aura of fire that I developed to get a better resistance to fire as I was already getting near my limits. They cooled things a little bit but only a little bit. Land there slowly. I gave a mental command and the Atronach did the work on its own. Good things these creatures have a fairly high intelligence or it would have been impossible to command them that way. Anyway, the flame Atronach hawk approached the rock and brought its talons on. Fuck. This is so freaking hot. I am on the verge of melting. I started complaining the moment I got down. Still, the rock is still much nicer than the lava womp under the big rock. I really needed to practice some frost magic or a frost aura to deal with this place. My limit in this place is two more minutes. I think I reached the center by this, no one here though? Never mind, I'll just go BA. Well, isn't that one way to reach the center? I heard a voice coming from the side. I turned and saw, Dayam. Ha ha ha. That bastard started laughing. I will look like this a few years from now then. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Come on. You are my son still you can't get as handsome as I am. Ha. Huh? In your dreams. I already surpassed a hundred like you. A hundred? If half a person as handsome as me excited then I would have torched them to as a long time ago. You fire manies and your arsonism. TCH. Here I face old John once again. I have never seen his face clearly last time and he had a beard but it seems that he shaved. Still, when we stood face to face, it felt like I am looking at myself in a mirror that showed me a little bit older. I am more handsome, of course. Did you just think that you are more handsome than me, you little bastard? And he can read my mind. I am more handsome than you, no argue about that, old bastard. Hoo hoo. Looks like these 16 years made you catch some bad habits, little bastard. He said as he evoked flame at his hand. I caught what I caught? You can't judge the son you just met, old bastard. I replied as I called the lightning. Look at you using some lightning? Do you think the true power lies anywhere far than the flames, little bastard? Lightning is the densest sort of destruction magic, old bastard. You think so? He looked with sharp eyes. For some reason, I lost some confidence but I knew I was right. Receive my attack then, he said and cast a fire spell on me. I put a ward up and received the spell but, erg, too heavy? I don't know what spell that is but it took a chunk of my magic huh? It looked like a whip made of flame. So formidable? Oh, you can block that. He looked a bit surprised for some reason. What the? Old bastard, did you just cast a spell at your son knowing he wouldn't block it? Huh? So you choose to be a son when it suits you, little bastard. We kept silent for a while looking at each other to assess the situation. He is strong. Beating him is impossible to the current me. Fire magic won't even harm him, frost won't work too, only storm magic and the other tricks can work on him. Retaliation time. I said as I made a hasty plan in mind and cast fast lightning spells. He only smiled and made the flame whip in his hand dance around to block my spells. I don't look so smug when I smile. I said. Ha ha, you have a big mouth. He said as he took a strange position. He took a deep breath the open his mouth and. Fuck. He breathed flames out of his mouth. Only one thing came to my mind. Fuss ro da. I used the Thursday um to counterattack him. My shout obliterated his fire breath and he jumped away from its way. Thank goodness my only redeeming feature worked. Damn, I thought I almost got you there you little bastard. Old bastard, you are seriously getting on my nerve. Ready to go one more time. Fuck off, one more second here and I will get a tan. I am out. Look at you escaping on your little bird. Nope, I am going to bring Hilda. See how you act cocky that time. H, hey, that's cheating. Wait, I am coming with you. Go away. This novel is possible because of a Patreon member request. So if you want to make a request. Like this you can become Patreon member. The link to my Patreon account is given at my discretion. It helps a lot thanks for watching this video.